currents can be really different. Like you'll hit a hit a point coming up, and the current will just shift. Um, I mean, the biggest thing practically is when yeah, when you're shallow, uh, Atalanta goes right where the ship goes really fast, so you get to kind of zoom around and do a lot really quickly. But none of those are necessarily pressure dependent, which was kind of the question. So it's an interesting question. So I'm kind of in favor of, we've gone along the top of this ridge for a little while now. I'd be in favor of dropping back down to the to the yeah. cliff, to the cliff. Because this is sort of the last spot where the cliff is going to be this steep for a while. It sort of looks like it broadens out and flattens out after this. So maybe have the ship pull us far, farther east. Can do. Sounds good. There's a cantaloupe-sized rock over there. <laughs> <laughs> GMO, maybe. Lots of cup corals on here. How do you pinpoint the exact location of the ROVs? We have a USBL system, ultra short baseline navigation system. It's basically uh, using acoustics to get us a range and bearing to where the vehicle is. He can, uh, he can start moving east if he wants. And so. Uh, he can start moving east. Let's do uh, 40, meter, 40 meters east. There's a transponder on the bottom of the ship that uh, pings. Bridge, this is enough to the vehicles and the vehicles answer back and tells us the distance. We know the speed of sound and, we'll, and seawater, so we can time that uh, 40 meters east, ping please. in response and we can uh, there, Jeff. measure the distance that way. Thank it, you. It's a little bit like underwater GPS. So you have an array of those transducers and uh, yeah, just like Dwight said that by having multiple elements um, pinging to the vehicle and back, you get um, you get like a return that you can use the two-way travel time to figure out how far away you are and tri triangulate your position. And the vehicle also has a, a DVL, which stands for a Doppler velocity log which measures how fast it's moving relative to the water or the bottom. And um, you can use that as like an odometer, like on your car, where you say, I've been going this fast for this long, so I'm probably here. Uh, but you're bound to be a little bit wrong, and or actually you're, gonna, you're bound to be more and more wrong over time. So we use the USBL to give the DVL a fix every now and then. Um, to kind of correct its position. Um, and the benefit of the DVL is that it's a continuous measurement, so you always know where you are, whereas with the USBL, it's uh, splotchy. You know, you get like one ping, you're here, one ping, you're somewhere, somewhere else. So yeah, you use both the sensors. Got a real Brittle Star Village going on. It's a yeah, star like a party. Star Nursery. Nice Ken Burns there. Thanks. Whoa. Back up. Back, back up. up, back up. It's like the only thing around for these guys to live on, so yeah. they all yeah. gravitated yeah. towards it. <laughs> I wonder if they ever leave. Why would you? Okay, I'm looking for a clip. <coughs> Going for a cliff dive. Oh yeah, headed east. Running start, jump. Are the sea stars parasitic, or do they have a symbiotic relationship with the sponges? 
So they're probably what we would call commensal, which means that um, they're neither parasites nor symbionts. Basically, the sponge doesn't care, but the, the brittle stars get a benefit out of using it as habitat. Sort of like a, a barnacle on a whale is a, another good example of a commensal mm -hmm. relationship. All those rocks, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> uh, those you could probably break one out of the cliff there. I have no doubt. Really weird. Okay. All the cup corals. We seen so many, and like none on the on the last dives. Yeah, if someone wants to do cup coral population genetics, this is a good place to go. Yeah. Is there a reason why the cup coral is so much smaller than what we saw last night? Is that a really young cup coral? Yeah, so these are fully grown cup corals, or at least some of them are. Um, cup corals don't get a, a ton larger than this, or this species doesn't. The reason they're so much smaller is that um, unlike a lot of the large corals we're seeing, which are colonial animals, so you'll see all those individual polyps making up a larger colonial animal, cup corals are solitary, so they're just one individual polyp each. Mm. Can we take a look at this coral here? I think this is uh, something different from what we've been seeing. Maybe. Let the current stuff me into the wall here. Okay. You might, might try the porch lights. Right, it looks like a. Hmm. Yeah, that help. Oh, there we go. Zoom in if you want. Yeah, yeah it looks like a primnoid octocoral to me. Sort of maybe a nodal branching pattern. A you can see it. Dead cup coral off the left. <laughs> you can really see the internal skeleton of it. Shady. <laughs> awesome, thanks. One of our colleagues ashore has identified this as a norella, type of primnoid octocoral. More of the spider webby things. I wonder what's producing that. Is it something that grows or is it a... I, my guess would be that this is mucus from some other organism. Um, we haven't seen slime stars a lot, which they have that name for a reason. They do produce a really crazy amount of mucus. I uh, don't know if that's the source, but it comes from somewhere, and someone's producing it here. What food do you guys normally have during an expedition? What food do we have? Yeah. A pretty wide variety. It's crazy wide, like yeah. It's a pretty dense buffet every meal time. We've got usually a few different protein options, some veggies, fruit. Usually a, oh, yeah, yeah. a stew as zero, well, zero, three, zero, mm -hmm. like yeah. a soup. Yeah. At lunch, there's Rich always the a stuff. soup. But no ice cream. No ice cream Sundays. Uh, 20 meters at 030, please. We just had a birthday the other day, Steve. We got a awesome carrot cake. We also have our 3 o'clock tea time, as I like to call it, where there's some sort of sweet put out. Can we come in a little tighter on some of this glass sponge here? Sure. Sorry, I'll come down a little bit. Yeah, come down and bring your head to the left.
left coast yeah, yeah. a little bit. Got a basket star. Another commensal organism sitting atop the sponge here. And looks like once again there's a coral growing directly bit. on oh. this glass sponge. Come down another five for me. Copy. Can I uh, zoom in a bit on the coral in there if you want? Yeah, that'd be great. You can zoom in right here. Looks like Paragorgia to me. Little squat lobster down there. Okay, it looks like I'm floating. Little guy hanging out there. Yeah. As environments go, where does deep sea sit within the possible extremes that an RV would be designated to encounter? Your head come to the left now? Um, I don't oh. think I can. Uh, I've been, uh, I'll reset the auto heading. Extreme and what, what, I don't, I'm not sure I understand the question. We lose the porch lights, please. Sorry, yeah. Hmm. It's definitely an extreme environment, but, you know, it's not like as extreme as maybe miles down into the Earth's crust, you know, where there are signs of life. Mm-hmm. Microbes, mostly. Extremophiles. What made you guys want to be ROV pilots? Um, sorry, hold on one second. I'm just trying to sort out the awesomeness of it. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm too far away. So yeah. I'll pull on you. Let's see if I can make my way to the east. I got, for me, I got tired of building them and fixing them. And wanted to fly them. Bridge, this is Nev. Uh, hold, hold him there for a minute. Okay. Touch. I gotta, I gotta come east. It went quite a bit east there. Still going east. Uh, hold, hold never mind. The hill Holding position. I didn't get, uh, I should reword that. I never got tired of building them and fixing them, but I got to start operating them, and it was. Can we get a zoom on this one when we get a chance? Sure. To get around to it. Looks like there's a little. We can park here. Yeah. Anemone yeah, there's an anemone here? on it. Push it a Probably bit there, it stole it anemone, looks like. Stuff. Yeah, mucus net or whatever it is.
What are we looking at? I'm trying to figure that out. Is there a particular area you want to look at? or? Yeah, if we could just get in as tight as possible on the polyps anywhere, really. Uh, yeah, let me see if I can get a perch here somewhere. Where it's in the light, not in the coral. <laughs> okay, Jeff, you can try that. I can tilt up into the light a little if you want, or is that good? Let's see what it looks like here. Squat lobster in there. Oh, looks like a bamboo coral, possibly. Sako is typing. Yep. Yeah, you can see Come some yeah. mm -hmm. dark down. sort of banding on the skeleton, characteristic Sorry, one more of Come bamboo down. corals. Yeah. And the sort of pink in the center of the polyp is typically a pretty good indication of bamboo coral as well. Oh, that's cool. They're all clenching now. Great. Thanks, pilots. Does an area like this technically count as a coral reef? And what does, um, what the, what constitutes a coral reef? Is there a reason the deep, that deep sea coral seems to be far more spread apart wow. than coral near the surface? That's an interesting, it's a really good question. Um, coral reef is when coral accrues over many generations. So coral grows and then its skeleton dies and then more coral grows on top of that, so it gets basically, um, it basically creates its own habitat. Uh, that is not what we're seeing here. This would probably fall under what is a coral garden, which is Thank a really you. high density and uh, diverse area of corals, but uh, it is not ma composed of corals growing on other uh, dead corals. It's composed of corals just growing on rocks. Um, but in the deep sea, there are actual coral reefs um, there are five different species that make coral reefs in the deep sea, and they're um, pretty widespread all over the world, um, typically from depths from about 200 about to 1,000 meters, meters uh, most commonly. 10 meters um, west. Bridge, this is Nev. And coral gardens like this can go much, much deeper, where Come down there's a oh, lower pH. Back down, sorry. And it, Ten meters west, please. And there um, are less corals that are able to grow hard skeletons, which is what form reefs. Ryan, I have a question. Yeah. So from my understanding, where I'm from, um, I'm sure everywhere around the world where coral reefs grow, um, these corals need what is known as Crutose coralline algae to grow on top of. Uh -huh. oh, is that the case for deep sea corals as well? Or what or what do they need to like kind of base themselves on rocks? Yeah, so deep sea corals, because um, they occur below 200 meters where there's uh, little to no sunlight, there's no algae at all. So you don't get the, the crustose coralline algae that you get in shallow water reefs. So they basically rely on themselves to build their own habitat, um, like I said, by um, building up skeleton, and that skeleton sort of traps sediment, and then they die, and then more coral grows on top of that for thousands of years, and then uh, the skeleton buildup creates its own habitat. You get these large mound features um, that can coalesce into reefs. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah. Looks, looks like a lolly there or a sea cucumber. <laughs> you talking about here? Yeah. It's yeah. An anemone? I think that's an anemone sort of tipped over in the breeze. Can zoom in a bit if you want. Yeah. yeah, let's take a look. I think there's something purple behind it, which might be interesting. Interesting stock on this anemone too. Yeah. Wow. Very interesting. And he texture. got too tall and <laughs> drooped over. 
Jupri see an enemy? I think that's a Victor Gorgia octocoral sitting behind it. Good to go a little tighter there if you want. Come on. That skin seems so more like. Yeah, it does look pretty bumpy. Come down five. Oh, yeah, right, that's great. Thank you. Back to par here while you're out in the deep water. Should get a little relief. It's a pretty cool formation, the whole round uh, structure there. Yeah, the way it sort of fans out is really interesting. How often do y'all go fishing on the boat? We're not allowed to in the monument, I don't think. Only... Never in the monument. Uh, cultural groups can apply a permit for fishing and that would be sustenance. Yeah. <laughs> but I so, don't outside the monument, I, you know, I, I've been on a lot of ships where people do like to fish and trawl, but, uh, we don't do it much on Nautilus. No time. Can we take a look at this star over on the right side? Right. I see this. Can I see this way? Yeah. So this looks like a different species of yeah. slime star potentially. We want 10 meters, 315. Rich, this is Nev. Good job. Push in there. Oh, yeah. Uh, 10 meters at bearing 315, please. Want to go for a sample? Yeah, I think we might want to collect this one. It looks like something on the wish list. Oh, yeah. What's going to be the uh, process of collecting it? I think we can just slurp. You want to go wide for a second? Yeah, they got that yep. slurp of that anemone earlier. That was impressive. This looks kind of big for a yeah, slurp, Yeah, probably though. too big. I'd say try to get it into the starboard bio into sea or with one of the rocks. You can, you can uh, do a tennis ball grab on it. Yep. We have enough... Uh, have enough leash there, hopefully. All right. Yeah, and I should be coming back your way once we start to feel that ship move. I'm coming on. Right here. Push in a bit there if you want, Jeff. Yeah, that's good, thanks. Can I have the list, please, so I can get the scientific name? Thank you. Not sure which one exactly. I think this one, you think? Uh, it's close. Are you a uh, Grip Force 3, are you? Hmm. It's a uh, good gotcha there. Yeah. Um. Could have been a gross gotcha. <laughs> yeah. 
Can they put the dive number though? Oh, sorry, one more second. Probably a terrestrial. You want to come in uh, perpendicular yeah. to it? Like this? Yeah, maybe a little more. Maybe um, turn your jaws about 90 to the right, 45 to the right, and then come in as so they both touch at the same time. Previous dive? I don't remember. Just like the stick on the box. Unless there. we forgot to note it. Sitting first, bottom one needs to come up under mm -hmm. more. Nice. Beautiful job. Did you say you wanted it with one of Val's rocks, or should we separate it? Starboard box C um, is available. Yeah, um, I don't think it matters. Uh, since we have, yeah, since that's open, I'd say put it there. But I'm not confident if there's a current. Once we spin it around, will it stay in this jaw? Should I try to tighten it a little bit? You could try and tighten it a little. Okay. Um, can we come wide a little bit? I want to just do this over the front porch a little bit, or at least back up here, so that if, yeah. So you're going to have to get a little more squeeze on him. Can we zoom back in a little bit now? Take another 10, 3, 1, 5. Yeah, these are, um, oh no. Bridge, this is not... Uh, 10 meters at 315, It'll please. be easy to grab that way, because <laughs> that probably worked to your... Uh, we all spoke too soon. Let me, uh, let me reposition, Well, Copy that. I'll have to pull your minute out. Yeah, this will be a fun one to handle in the lab, because they do produce a lot of mucus. <laughs> I'm going to come up just to touch on the... Yeah, you're all right. It's coming towards us. Pull your minute back somewhere, please. Yep. Okay. Playing on his side for easy grab. Can we uh, zoom back in a little bit? Do we have any more pan down? Yeah, I was just trying to bring the vehicle up, but I can pan down. Awesome, thank you.
close pivoting around. Can't quite keep it stable. Yeah, that's a good grab there. Good job. Starboard box C is available. Is that good on the view? Do we need to spin? Oh, I took a, I took a shot I, of it. Oh, I, I think this is okay. I, would, yeah. I don't think I'd spin. Yeah. I wouldn't bother with the spin now. Yeah. yeah. We'll Roger. Look at it plenty later. I sure hope it doesn't fall out in the okay, current. I didn't get a snap of it. Not done. Do you want to bring it back? What? Do you even get a snap of it, did you say? Um, I did not. I thought I did. I so. got a video highlight of it. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll shoot another highlight right now, just in case. Yeah, Thanks, quick Paul. Quick zoom there if you want, Jeff. If you want a snap. You got it? Yeah. Okay. All right. What do you want it? C? Starboard box C. Sample salvo. I know. I, I I just put it on both for now. You rotate your jaws ninety. You'll have There's more three. Open There's three. There's actually the three of them. There. <laughs> I wrote it on that one. Like that. Yep. Yeah. Think I'm clear to release. Uh, I'd stuff it in a little before you release. You can actually the jaws will fit down in the box there. little buddy you can make it you can do it go you in have to, you have to close them a little to get it out oh, 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 oh. Oh. wants to go in d give it a love tap no oh, come on you can do it <laughs> no <laughs> it's oh. floating <laughs> come back oh. come back come back come back oh, no. Oh, 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 come back. Oh, no. Coming, coming towards us. <laughs> it's, it's coming back. The thruster. And it's, uh -oh. it's coming and it's... <laughs> it's going back to where it started. <laughs> How fast can, can Paul react? <sighs> that is brutal. <laughs> it's posing Sorry, a great I challenge. To, I tried to help with the thrusters there and didn't. Oh, it's going down the cliff face now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, there you go. There he is. Mid-air snatch. Or mid-water snatch. Mid-water snatch. Kind of a floater, isn't he? There's nothing in that box that's going to fly out while I'm flying around. No, it's, it's just, just rocks. rocks. Thankfully. I wonder if this is a sea star that's making all the web-like, webby things. Yeah, I don't know. I said that earlier, but now I'm doubting that. <laughs> the mucus it produces isn't kind of netty or webby. Good like for that. me to swap back to dive. Uh, you can grab it if you want. Yeah, good for you to swap however you want. Before you roll. 
falls all the way down the cliff face. Can we zoom in a little bit? Or is that, is that him? I know that was the rocks. You got this, Paul. Like a pro. Turn your jaw so you can see if you got a good squeeze on him or you come around. Yeah, I think you got him. Perfect. Okay, right. when you get close this time, I'm just going to dead stick and let the vehicle float. So Sounds good. Well. Sample salvo. Thrust coming out to hold it there. Yeah. Okay. We're floating. Oh, God. Oh, no. That's it's okay. That's okay. That's great. Stay there, you. We'll put a rock on top of it. <laughs> so Val's gonna drop a rock on top of it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, she will. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, thanks. That was a difficult one. Did not look <sighs> easy. Just making us have to erase our sample sheet. <laughs> Probably have, what, just 10, 15 minutes left on our watch. Let's uh, do one more ship move or one more little exploration run. Yeah. Yep. Rich, this is Nev. Let's do a, let's try a north, move to the north and see what happens. 15, you said? Uh, uh, 20. We can do 20. Uh, north. 20 north, please. The vehicle flies much better if I just take my hands off the controls. <laughs> <laughs> I have to remind myself of that every once in a while. What made you guys want to become ROV pilots? Did we already answer that? I can't remember. Yeah, we did already answer that. And the answer was because it's awesome. Yeah. It's awesome. And that remains the answer. And that remains the answer. <laughs> Say one of these guys in a while. Yeah, I think this is a Iridogorgia or Pushing a road in Iridogorgia. Pushing a little there to so we can look down the spiral. Oh, a cool shot. The 
Is it a spiraling coral? Yeah. Someone described these as a, a firework suspended in the water. Fireworks suspended in the water. Yeah. Let's uh, come up the hill a little bit there. That's an interesting feature in the Argus sonar. Mm. Sorry, the Atlanta sonar. Huh. Here's a whip bamboo with a, is there a sea star on there? You can uh, push in on that one, Jeff. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh, we get a really good shot of it actually potentially digesting some of this coral. Looks like it worked its way from the, I mean. So sea stars are interesting in that they digest their food outside of their body. They so avert their stomachs like outside of their mouth and uh, use digestive enzymes to sort of break down their food before pulling it back into their stomach. Good overall shot of it here. So that gives them a, a way to digest food that they normally wouldn't even be able to fit in their mouth. So they digest it outside their body. So did he start at the bottom and he slowly? Hard to say because we've seen a lot of these that are just sort of losing tissue at the bottom without a sea star present. Oh, yeah. Hmm. What's the prettiest deep sea coral? I like those okay, Iridogorgia yeah. we saw a minute ago. Yeah. To me, those right, are up there with anything. Yeah, you can see its stomach. Oh my god, that's crazy. Wow. He's gorging himself oh on this my. thing. I can't even see where this top goes. Yeah, that's its stomach outside of its... That's Whoa. so cool. Have you ever seen that? You've never seen that before. No, oh, it's look, rare it's you get to see on one. It's got one down like that. It's got a polyp right there. That's a great shot. It's a, I think that's worthy of a five. Where does the stalk go? I know. I guess he I think just he's can't hanging see on it. it. Yeah. He's like hanging underneath. Is that one of his feet is on the other side too? <laughs> That's cool. Jeez. That's a wild find. It's a good way to end their shift. Started from the bottom, now he's here. <laughs> Potentially. <laughs> That's one scientific hypothesis. <laughs> Are you staying? From noted philosopher Drake. <laughs> Is bioluminescent plankton present at this at this depth? Uh, I believe so. Yeah. Okay, I can go back to. Zero three zero, if you want. Okay. Or whatever it takes us along the ridge. Yeah. Yeah. Bridge, this is Nev.
20 meters at zero two zero, please. Big like columnar features too. Looks like that same kind of sponge we spotted yesterday. Yeah. Some type of... Thank you. Thanks, Dwight. <laughs> yes. You want one of these? Yes. I'm, it's covered in chocolate and down for that. <laughs> Does watching the ROVs video cause any issues since you are on the ship that may have a different motion? <laughs> it can. It can. But the motion of the ship right now is not that bad. If you are feeling seasick, being up in the control van is not necessarily the happiest place to be. No. Uh, when we're underway, the vans are at the very top of the ship, and all of the monitors are either pointed the wrong direction from what you think you're going, or they're very slightly delayed. Push it there, Jeff. That's a great shot. Right down the middle. Yeah, right down it. Is this a, a glass coral? It's the, yeah, glass, glass sponge. sponge sorry. Looks like there's something red in there, maybe a, a brittle star or something living yeah. deep in there. Yeah. Seems to be the theme. This is really good lighting. Yeah, pretty dramatic. Yeah. Actually, uh, hit the porch lights real quick, Dan. I want to see what it does. Roger. Whoa. Ooh. Whoa. Let there be light. <laughs> yeah, it's probably better without it because he. Now you're seeing the top of it as opposed to down inside it. But. Looks like there's a, I don't know, I feel like I saw a little tiny fishy, but it might just be a part of the sponge itself. It's probably just a part of the sponge. Because it looks like the same color. I hmm. No, I didn't see anything moving. Alrighty. I always thought you were going to come off. I'm out. Here comes Christopher. Yep, we are, uh, Thank you, everybody. Quick Come on, you can kill the porch lights. Doing right. a shift change here over the Thank next you. few minutes. All right. As 12 to 4 starts to uh, work their way into the control van. Just a touch. Yeah. Can you zoom in a little bit? Just past the corona or whatever we call it. Just zoom in just a little bit. No, too much. <laughs> <laughs> just the uh, just on the edge there. Yeah, that's good. That's good, Paul. Yep.
Anchorage. This is Nav. Twenty meters at zero to zero, please. few meters if you want. Yep. All right, back row is changed over to the 12 to 4 shift, and front row is busy changing as we speak. So uh, we'll, uh, over the next few minutes, uh, get, uh, get that changeover done and uh, get back on our way. Bring your head to the right, just a little bit. Raj. So it looks like just about the time we started moving in, uh, the biota really dropped off. It's interesting timing there. It's the calm before the storm. We're gonna get some really good stuff. I can feel oh, it. Totally. Just around this corner. Okay, here we are. <laughs> finally in the house. <laughs> Thanks everyone. I'm out. Bye, Dan. See you later, Dan.
check, check. One, two. Loud and clear. And uh, video, just to confirm, see where we're at. Is, are we full wide on Atalanta right now? Rush, thank you. <laughs> yeah, sure thing, please, that'd be great. <laughs> All right, let's do, that's pretty good. Turn off the porch light, I think that'll get us a better shot. And would you mind centering up over there on that screen there, please? So we are about eight hours into an expected 22-hour dive um, on Solidae Seamount is on the western fork of the Liliokalani Ridge within the Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument. Um, so, back row. We Here. don't currently have a move-in, so where do you want to go? Who do we want to be tonight? Shall we continue to waypoint four? Or yeah. on the edge? Um, can, we, can we hug the contour that we're on uh, for a little bit longer and then move north to waypoint four? Okay. Sure thing. Yeah, Dwight's been saying uh, about where we're at and following the ridge, uh, kind of right on the corner there, has been uh, pretty interesting because a lot of the uh, corals are kind of on the side, and there's a little less that we uh, to uh, document up at, uh, on the top of the ridge, at least right now. Okay, so let's uh, move zero to zero, zero. Uh, al along this edge. Roger that. Yeah. Zero Sounds to good. zero. A zero to zero. <laughs> More like zero to hero. Oh, just oh, like that. Just Ooh. like, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm going there. <laughs> Solid. Red, is this contour map going out on we, screen four? We are zero to hero. We start at zero o'clock. <laughs> we are zero to hero. <laughs> Ooh. This whole watch. <laughs> We're ready? very Herculean. This ready effort. to go? Yes, please. Bridge, this is Nav. Can we make a move on bearing 0 to 0, 50 meters, uh, speed 0 0.2 of a knot? Eli, are you trying to change our team name? Our watch well, name? What was our That's team affirmative. <laughs> what was it? I think Rockstars was the uh, Rock stars. Wor working name. When did that happen? <laughs> I did not sign off. I was joking Undertakers a couple <laughs> of days ago. <laughs> Zero to hero, though. I like that. Thank you. Yo, get on SPL front row. You're laughing, and I'm feeling extremely left out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> oh, are you not on SPL? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Those drop offs. Zero are two sure. zero. Big. Thank you. If you've been with us for a while, you'll know that the most life that we've found down here is on these vertical or nearly vertical uh, walls. This ridge has definitely a steep side and a shallow side. So we're progressing up the steeper side. Man, every time I write the date on a sample sheet, I'm like, really? 2022? Can you believe that? No. Anyone else still shocked? Yes. I like never write out the date except for 
this right now. The past two years have been a blur, so they really it's have no been. Let's really kidding. start over here on this, on this decade. Yes, please. <laughs> but you defended. You don't want to go back to before you defended. Oh, no, no, let's, let's be, yeah, that's true. Let's, let's keep that one factor <laughs> That <here>. That yeah. <laughs> can stay. <laughs> yeah, you only ever need to defend once. <laughs> once per degree, anyway. Once per degree. Oh my gosh, can you well, imagine you did defend multiple times? <laughs> I, I did a master's and then a PhD and I, you know, that was two defenses, so that was, that was plenty. Oh, that's a good point, actually. That's a... What is that, like, pink blob on the lower mm, part of that rock? The lower left? Yeah. That. Is that a coral wedged in there? Yeah, yeah. It's, like if it's so, it's like roll wedged. You're probably right, but yeah. Could it we get a quick zoom on that? Strange. Yeah, sure thing. Thanks. All right, go ahead, right. You have to ID it That's though, Val. Awesome what coral is it? No promises. Um, oh, it's you one. got no. this. You got no. it. You got it. <laughs> Wait, what well, do you remember you the common name? I heard. I heard it said earlier tonight. It's a. It's a precious coral, hemichorallium. Hemichorallium. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Oops. Sorry. Thanks. Can I a little wide there, please. That's good, thank you. It looks like it's attached to the substrate and it just grew. Yeah, look grew at all the cup it. corals. There's so many. Oh yeah. It's like a hermit coral. Go ahead and push on in a little bit more there. Hmm. I don't know why it wanted to That's be all great. by itself over there. Oh. Oh, there's a crustacean of some sort there on the bottom right of it. Probably a squat lobster. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good spot. I wonder if there's All like right. a current that there, flows please. through that crack in the rock there. Right. Actually, yeah, that's not a bad guess. It looks like it is open to the bottom up well kind of of the current. Or else it's just an introvert. Yeah. <laughs> I know that feeling. Introverts still got to eat, though. <laughs> yes. True that. Oh, uh, we had a question about what does it mean to defend? Are we mm. talking about our yeah. PhD thesis? Yeah. Um, Val probably has a better, more succinct way of describing this. Because um, right now my brain can't compute as to what I did. <laughs> 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 that makes perfect sense. Yeah, a defense is uh, basically like, a, a, it's, it's kind of like the final exam for an advanced degree. And um, the way that we usually give them is uh, you have part of your defense is a public uh, presentation of uh, your dissertation topic. Um, and then, uh, yeah, anybody can go to that if, uh, if they want to. And then um, you basically step through and say, okay, this is, this is what I did, this is what I found, um, you know, here are the interpretations, whatever. So it's a, it's a presentation of your uh, research, usually about 45 minutes or so long. And then afterward, you meet with a uh, committee of uh, professors um, that have been uh, kind of monitoring your progress uh, uh, through, through the program. And uh, they, they discuss, okay, um, you know, what were the strengths and weaknesses of this? What, uh, you know, they'll go over some questions that they have for you. Um, and you have to be ready to answer that. And that can go, I, I've seen that go anywhere from 45 minutes to folks up to a couple hours, which is... Oh, imagine that. that that's, that's quite a bit of endurance there. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty much uh, you're, you're, quali uh, you're demonstrating your uh, qualification for whatever degree you're uh, you're trying to get there, like if it's a master's degree or a doctorate. Ooh. Big ball soma. Yeah. Uh, this is these are the first this is the first time we're seeing the big yellow E T like ball somas. Yeah, we saw one a little earlier, didn't we? Mm -hmm. That was a great way to describe it. Yeah, that it was that was a good description. <laughs> Thanks. Afterward you get to you get to uh, party with your friends. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then sleep. <laughs> yeah, sleeping too. is very important after a defense. 
and then your brain goes mushy for a while. <laughs> That's also true. Yep, oh. and allowed. <laughs> Yeah, these are really interesting. It's, it's such a bright yellow stalk. Yeah. It's like popcorn on a leash. Popcorn, popcorn on, on a leash. leash. <laughs> Got a leash in that popcorn that there, one. see? <laughs> yeah, keep that popcorn from running away. Yeah. So wait, this popcorn's allowed in the control van, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, go ahead and push that in there a bit, please. Oh, wicked. Ooh, it's yeah. like a bath sponge. Wow. It's beautiful. I'm a little scrubber. Good for your back. <laughs> Can I take more zoom bubble for a second? Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. Oh, yeah. cool I'm floors. so torn. I like want to be on still cam, and I also want to be getting these shots. Yeah. Look at all the sea stars hanging out in there. Yeah. Look like brittle star arms. The porosity yeah. and the texture is awesome here. Mm -hmm. Can I come a little wide there? Yeah, wicked. Oh yeah. Nice shots. Really good still cam picks. Nice. Awesome. All right, go ahead and come wide from our popcorn print. <laughs> Fun fact about sponges, they're Thank animals you. that don't have any tissues. They only have a few different types of cells. My favorite type of cell in a sponge is the amoebocyte cell, which doesn't stay put. It just wanders around feeding other cells and fixing things. And oh, wow. Mm -hmm. That's cool. How does it, it move around, you know? It, it's uh, it, it kind of like an amoeba. Okay. Uh, it changes shape and squeezes in between other cells. It's also got a uh, kind of cell called the coanocyte. They have uh, a little flagella, and that's what helps to get the water moving. And they have a little, like, it's kind of like a little turtleneck around the flagella so that food can stick to it. It's a good way to describe the turtleneck. Yeah. Little yeah. turtleneck. That's so cool. <laughs> Got a few other kinds Rhett, of you're not on true. SPL if you want to be. You no, know, I can't hear you at all. Yeah, right, sorry. No, you're no. silent. No, no, you got something. Try again. Mute. <laughs> Mute. There we are. <laughs> That's the ticket. Turns out you have to turn it on sometimes. <laughs> you have to unmute yourself. Yeah. What things were you saying over there while we came? <laughs> <You're> just <laughs> mumbling to himself just, the whole time. Just making compliments for everyone in the room, you know. But oh, oh. Do it again. <laughs> All of them unnoticed. <laughs> just kidding. What does it mean to not have any tissues as a multicellular organism? So it has uh, cell types, but none of them uh, require other cell types of the same kind. Shall we make another function. move? Yeah, let's do it. So let's you could... Let's keep moving a little bit. Yeah, what is that black thing? Fuzzy blob. Is we'll it go the black orb? 025. 025, Raj. 025. It's Praise not this a It does look like one, it, doesn't it? It's a, it looks kind of like a lipanema pom-pom anemone. Uh, go ahead and okay. push on there a bit, please. Yep. That's brilliant. Yeah, that's lipanema. Bridge, can so we make cool. a move uh, 50 meters on bearing 025? Thank you. Let's see if we got This will be helpful for you. <coughs> Was that just helping to wash it out? <laughs> yeah, I think it washed it out a little Sorry. bit too much. Right. It mainly helps when there's a dramatic difference between the lights and the darks um, to the point that, you know, it's hard to... Uh, Hard to adjust the iris for everyone. Basically, it, it makes everything flatter. I see. Okay, that's good. That's good to keep in mind for me. Do you want to push a little bit on this guy here? I'll get you a little bit square. It's nice. a cool little thing. Reminds me of some of the dahlias I've Got grown. Got any more push on there? Mm, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. It kind of looks like a wicked pine cone. Hmm. It kind of does. <laughs> Mom's pine cones. Yeah. All right, full white, please. Thank you. That was fun. We haven't seen any pom-pom anemones yet. It's cool.
cool terrain. Yeah, yeah it is. The really crazy features. Tell us more, Val. I know you want to. <laughs> <laughs> this looks like a stack of uh, sheet flows. Mm. You can see the uh, nearly horizontal um, breaks in this outcrop. And that does look like uh, yeah, a series of uh, lava flows, one on top of the other. Do you think it could be called a ream of sheet flows? Yes, <laughs> I <Wow>. think so. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what's a ream? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is cool. 12 to 4 is sponsored by but Debbie why? B. Mason. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. God. I'm done with my paper co. <laughs> <laughs> why is there nothing growing on this? This looks like this is a good spot. Yeah, but they're the, all pretty small here. There is a current. I don't know. There's cup corals stepped are having terrain. Fun. Yeah, what are. Yeah, there is some. Just cup corals hanging interesting out. Interesting coral. Yeah. What is this oh, white what's section? That coloration there? Yeah. yeah, I was listening in earlier, and Ryan was saying he's never seen cup corals uh, just distributed like this. Usually, really? he says usually they cluster together. Go ahead and push on up there, a bit, please. Awesome. Huh? What is sponge. what is going on? Mm, that doesn't look appetizing. Sponge? Oh yeah. yeah, maybe. Maybe. Oh, sorry, took off the lasers. Come That's actually there, Paragorgia. Yeah. Thank you. So I have something I'll else on top down. of it. Did you want me to look at that Victorgia there? Or did you want me to look at the cup corals? I think we're all right in general. Okay. There are a lot of cup corals. Yeah, look at all these guys just dotting all over the rock. <laughs> cool. Maybe that's what was on my rock. Like an <laughs> itty bitty tiny little cup coral. Are those hard? <laughs> Can the stock yeah. of that be hard? Yeah, yeah. cup yeah, corals totally. are, they're sclerotinian, they're um, like stony Go corals. Go to push on in there a bit, please. Because if you saw a, even like a mini, 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 miniature version of one of these, that's kind of what my thing looks like. I'm, I can see that, yeah. But without of the, any of the... Uh, Full light, please. Spicules. No? Tentacles? Tentacles. Raj, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but you I remember don't speak spicules. science. That <laughs> 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 wasn't the right thing to use, but I remembered. <laughs> so why is this lighter? It looks like that's a like very the good same question. color as the hyaloclastite stuff from the other day. Yeah, it's a very good question. I'm not sure what that is. We can do a really quick zoom if you'd like. Yeah, let's do a real quick zoom on the rock. Roger that. Where it's kind of yellow. Go to push out in there, please. Awesome. Huh. Um. Yeah, that looks like hyaloclastite. Haha. <laughs> what is it doing in sheets? <laughs> I, mean, I think you we saw some evidence light, of that please? a few dives ago too. Both sedimentary awesome. and there. igneous. Is that correct? Yes. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> She's educated. <laughs> <laughs> Roger. <laughs> it's interesting that they're like, yeah, it's like on that top layer only. Right. Keep this up, and we won't need a back row. <laughs> <laughs> we, will, oh, we will need a back row. <laughs> oh, why, please? There's another one of those pencil urchins in that corner. Pencil urchins. We had some questions about the big yellow sponge that we saw. Yes. Um, what is their growth rate? What is their maximum size? And what is their lifespan? That is oh, some questions. That is great questions. Uh, it's Bolosoma, and we have seen some really, really big ones of those. Um, but that is all I can tell you. I don't know anything about their their growth rates or their maximum size. Yeah, I don't think I've ever heard anyone take a stand comment at that on that. Before, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I don't know that we def that anyone definitively knows that. But yeah, we've definitely gone through some big sponge gardens mm -hmm. that were over a meter tall at least, right? Yeah. Yeah. In the past. It's also kind of hard to. Nothing. I was. W I saw you do that, and I was wondering if Bluetooth was on. It is not. <laughs> <laughs> what was that, Christopher? I was thinking it, it's kind of hard to <laughs> define a single sponge organism because it, for a lot of sponges, you break them in half, and you now have two sponges. <laughs> right. And they just keep growing. Budding. They don't. They don't seem to miss the parts that are gone. I wonder how that works. Like, I wonder if that's. 
case. <laughs> like, what would happen if you <laughs> broke off the a head oh portion God. of a balsam and put it somewhere else? <laughs> like, would that grow a stalk? I wouldn't imagine mm -hmm. so, but maybe. Hmm. Is that I've seen experiments that they've done where they just push a sponge through a screen and turn it into spaghetti, and each of the little spaghettis right. grows into a, its own sponge. So, but I feel like I've never thought about that with a stocked sponge. I don't but either. you know, totally possible. Maybe it just grows a new stock out the bottom. I think that hyaloclast I had bedding planes. That's pretty wild. Had what? Bedding planes, like uh, sedimentary structures in it. So that might have been those thin horizontal uh, striations we were seeing in that outcrop. Is this more of that demi sponge that we've been seeing? That looks, looks like that, like, for Ferrea type thing. Oh, yeah, you're right. It's it's different than I was thinking. It reminds me of, like, old 19th or, like, 18th century clothing. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Uh, <laughs> the frills. The frilly. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, is it, what is that one called? <laughs> Go ahead and push on the name, please. <laughs> it's under... <laughs> um, <laughs> I think this is going to be under Euplectelid, maybe. Let's see. Go ahead and come full wide, please. <laughs> nope, not you plucked till it. Ooh. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's a big old sponge. Hello there. So, do we like to maintain the same heading, or do we like to go more to east uh, al uh, along this edge? Um, actually, can we start heading north toward waypoint four? Yes, we can. Thanks. I'm interested in seeing what's above this uh, current outcrop. So the next move will be north, zero, zero, zero. Would you like to stop over here or continue? Okay, bridge this is not. Well, more cop corals. Um, can we have uh, a move towards north, zero, 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 50 meters? The contrast on these is always so stark because there's Thank such you. dark background and then this crazy thing. Maybe that's a weird polyopagon. Like, it does have the carve out on the right face, sort of. Hmm. That was the only thing that I could think of. Do you guys want a wider shot? I think or is we're OK. Team? OK, Roger that. What is the membrane around the top of it? What is that red thing in the back? Um, I think that that is just like a spicule sheet. It's not, I don't think that that's like a soft or a, I, like a tissue like membrane you know it's I sure. think that's just a oh, I really thin spicules totally. um, and the thing in the back I think was an anemone that was all sucked up okay yeah, I think yeah is this sponge made of glass it is a glass sponge Ooh, yeah. it's gonna be hard doesn't look, it looks like a couch cushion not gonna <laughs> feel like a couch cushion <laughs> <laughs> yeah it looks like polyopgun looking at these pictures Couch cushion sponge. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. The glass couch cushion sponge. <laughs> Looks like a Cheeto to me. I don't like that. Cheeto <laughs> sponge. <laughs> Just without the dust, yeah. Oh, this is pretty white cheddar Cheeto. <laughs> oh, those are good. Actually, Wait, that's real? Looking at the red thing now, it kind of looks like a mushroom coral that's all sucked up. You guys want another shot on it? It's okay. Reg. It's a bunch more of those stocked crinoids behind there. Yeah. Just like in the early part of the dive. I'm looking for a spot for an eDNA sample, but there may be something denser as we yeah. go. I mean, it's a long dive. We got time. We got time. A viewer is suggesting the smaller sponge was a Feria day. Yeah, it looks kind of like 
Ferreira. Um, it's hard to tell. Ferreira can look really similar to a couple other things too. Those lettuce leafy like sponges. Heterary looks sort of similar. A question about how sponges are made of glass. Um, I believe that has to do with the material that makes up the spicules, the little skeletal structures inside the sponge. Yeah, they're silicious, so made out of silica. Um, yeah, so sort of like glass in their structure. I worked at a science center years ago, and one of my colleagues brought some sea creatures to a school classroom and the kid took the, the sponge and rubbed it on his arm uh -huh. to try to bathe with it and his arm got all itchy. And oh yeah, it's oh, kind of oh, more no. like a fiber class in yeah. some ways. Whoa, and then, there's another one. And all the other wow. kids wanted to rub sponges on their arms too. <laughs> oh, so they didn't have to stay <laughs> at school? To, so they just, also get, just to get tiny glass pieces, yeah. silica pieces in their arm. That's, that's like trusting kids to handle reticulate properly. So easy to get little shards of glass from that too. Reticulite is extremely bubbly um, lava. So kind of like pumice except more. And you get those during very high, very, bleh, excuse me, very high fount, uh, fountaining eruptions like you get at Kilauea sometimes mm. and at Etna too. Very yeah, fragile, <coughs> sort of like nature's aerogel. Do a little partial zoom, get the whole thing in frame. Yeah, that rocks. Kids so love to crush that stuff. Or something? Yeah. Squatty on top. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Little squat lobster buddy yeah. just hanging out uh -huh. up there. It's like doing the, the Rocky pose. It does. Zero to <laughs> zero. <laughs> Claws in the air. You don't care. <laughs> it's very cool. It's got interesting shapes in the back there. Yeah, it's bigger than I thought it'd be. From the back side. Oh, we got another little buddy on there. Probably have a few. I'm just going to turn off my lights. All lights. Oops. That's Ooh. Oh, nice. A question about uh, whether anyone's ever examined coral sponges or fish for stem cells. Mm. Oh, wide, please. I want to say sponges. These sort of are very simple cells that can change from one form into another in some cases. Yeah. Let's look they're, into it I more. I think they're highly specialized enough. Yeah. I remember learning about these, the totipotent cells, stem cells that can turn into lots of different things in sponges. Which really helps with regeneration. It's kind of fascinating that they can be that versatile in their role. It's still looking like uh, Hyaloclastite, this is a pretty big deposit. Yeah. I imagine fish must have stem cells during embryonic development, like most organisms do. Mm -hmm. But they're not really known for their regenerative properties, so. That was a yes. cool shot. Oh, you have that up? <laughs> Can I? Yeah, these are pretty good. Yep. Blue, blue, blue. Oh, there's another one of those, uh, what'd you call it, puffball? Oh, the lipanema, yeah. um, pom pom mm. anemones. Pom pom, there we go. Good oh, idea. yeah. Puffball is just as good. It really does look like an urchin. It That's does. It does. wonder if it has like a defensive strategy. Ooh, that's an interesting thought. Are there very many visual predators down here? Oh, well, that's, that's a, a good, good point. point. 
I mean, maybe. I just well, don't we know. had those fish yesterday. It was but it, 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 such minimal light. But also the fluorescence thing that we gave were bioluminescence of some kind. Too. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm assuming that they were uh, predatory. But yeah. But if you bioluminesce or fluoresce, then like, how much does it matter exactly what your shape is? If you can sort of dictate what you look like. That's yeah. a very good point. Yeah. It looks like we're starting to get back into pillow territory. Um, I'm seeing more spheroidal shapes. Although this is still kind of geologically complex. The cliff is geologically isn't. complex. Yeah, because I'm still seeing hyaloclastite at the top of the screen. So that, dude, maybe that's spheroidal weathering, or it's just uh, interspersed. Can you talk more about how hyaloclastite forms? Sure. So hyaloclastite is a uh, volcano sedimentary rock type, and uh, it is it seems to be generated in uh, submarine settings like this, where um, you your your lava is interacting with seawater, um, pretty high energy environment, and it just Take fragments, it. And breaks, and brecciates, and it gets deposited. Okay. As, so um, using the cursor, we have a minute. you were here. Ready for it? Done. Sorry, I misheard who said that. Sorry, Jess. Oh, yeah, no worries. You full right there? Uh, let me check. Now I am. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, so you get these uh, volcanic deposits that form out of just like torn up, broken up um, lavas and a have a huge variety of grain sizes from, uh, you know, the microscopic uh, matrix to pieces of volcanic rock, uh, a couple of centimeters across, like one that we have down in the lab. Oh, and uh, sometimes the, the pieces of those broken up lavas can be tens of centimeters too, which I think we have seen on some of the video. And uh, yeah, it sort of welds itself together and it gets hydrothermally and seawater altered, which turns it that uh, that lighter color compared to the darker color basalts that we're, we've been picking up uh, pretty frequently on these dives. And uh, yeah, I've been speculating that those are probably coming from somewhere, some volcanic vent nearby, but it's not entirely clear where that vent is. So that's just a tentative uh, field ID there. But yeah, it's, it's a rock that's both volcanic and sedimentary. One of those uh, one of those spots in geology where you kind of get into a classification gray area. Mm. Nice. We'll make another move. Roger that. Bridge, this is Nav. Another another move, same step please. Looking at some stuff that looks like basalt rubble here, but a lot of it looks pretty stuck together. We've been seeing some of that the last few dives. Another one of those. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, what is that? The Maybe, it looks like the pom-pom. Maybe. Maybe it's a shrimp in like a yoga pose. <laughs> <laughs> it might be as you get closer. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's too red for the for the pom poms. Go ahead and push that in there a bit, please. Oh, oh. it's a tube anemone of some kind. Cool. Interesting. Nice eye. It's a beautiful red. Is that one of the ones on the wish list? I think there might have been a. Yeah, there was something sort of similar to that on the wish list. I can uh, go to. Oh, really? Want. Yeah, go ahead. Was, you think that's the one they collected? Mm -hmm. I can go back and look at the pictures of that. I'm going to do one bump up, maybe. <laughs> Sorry, stand by. Mm, yeah, yeah it does so. look like that Syrianth area on the wish list. They collected it or they need it um, collected? Let me look back at the picture of the one that they took earlier. Reg. Was that the slurp sample? 
Uh, yeah, which I imagine they wouldn't have slurped a two. Come a little wide there, please. That's good. Sorry I didn't get you that good shot there. Oh, that's all right. Mm, let's try one more time. Try that. Ooh, like no, that. it was a, well, they said large purple tube anemone in the description and the picture. Uh, uh, uh. I'm going to have to get going soon. Did you guys want us to drop a position here? If we uh, it? Yeah, sure. Do you mind dropping a target? Would would you like to name it? Uh, tube, tube anemone. Oh, I Gerald. T U P. Yep. Uh, A N E M O N E. And then, would you also mind putting a target here on the DVL screen as well, please? Yeah, it doesn't belong Take like it. that. Would you also mind getting a target there? Yeah. Thank you. Coming up. So is that a confirm that we want to take that sample, or? I'm still looking back at the pictures. Oh, yeah, what they sampled was very different. So I think it would be great to collect that if we can. Mm -hmm. I agree. I'll hold position. Yeah, if you want to hold Bridge, position. Bridge, this is nav. Yeah, that's a lot more purple than what we just saw. Uh, hold position here, please. Thank and you. Would you mind backing the ship up about 30 meters or so? Uh, sure. We'll go 20 meters, then we'll see if you are there. And Yeah, there's no harm in actually getting us a bit further from the wall. Okay. So, yeah, I would probably suggest 30 meters at like a 180. Praise, this is Nav. Can we make a move uh, on bearing 180, 30 meters? Affirmative. Thanks a lot. Nice cross section of a pillow right there. Just a little guy. Oh, yeah. Showing some of those radial fractures off. Got to do a quick little zoom there. Yeah, that's good. Oh, yeah, that's got a pretty good manganese crust going, too. We're seeing the spider web stuff again. Yeah, I saw that in a couple other places. Yeah. Do you think that's bacterial mat? It's a great question. I don't know. It looks like the I've same as like Cascadia margin last year a little bit, you know? Yeah, it's not, it's oh, not like, please. it doesn't look to me like quite that bacterial map, but maybe it's some kind of a biofilm or some other bacteria that I'm not familiar with. Raj. But yeah, great question. We haven't seen this coral yet. Yeah. From Noid maybe, or bamboo. I was wondering if it might have been a bamboo. I'm guessing from Noid, but I guess we won't know until we... Right. Go ahead and push on in there a bit, please. It looks difficult to tell. I want to mm -hmm. say more Primno would like, but... I can go further. Yeah, if there's further, if it's allowed by Jess. Yep, yeah, sure, go ahead. If it is a bamboo, it's really hard to tell under the tissue. Let's 
seems to have uh, another uh, Chrysogorgia. Somehow it looks like those bottle brushes we've been seeing in the lower right. Um, yeah, it is. Those are Chrysogorgia. Cool. Thank you. See, I can still do a biology. You're doing mm. great. <laughs> do a biology. <laughs> I can do a biology. <laughs> I can do a geochemistry, too. <laughs> Jack of all trades. Maybe. <laughs> all right. Is that good for you guys back there? Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Pull away, please. Hopefully we should start to feel that swing pretty soon, and then we can go back down the hill. All right. Gave us a little preview of this uh, flatter area here, so I'm not seeing too much for an easy basalt grab. So once we move back up this way, we'll uh, I'll, I'll be keeping an eye out. Roger that. Yeah. So how frequently are you trying to grab rock samples? Um, since we've doubled the. Uh, doubled the approximate length of the dive and the uh, uh, transit for the dive. I was thinking doubling the distance between rock samples, yeah. too. Because we have four already. Just I noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> the previous ships have been busy. <laughs> it, um, it, it just might be a good, uh, a good thing to keep an eye out for around waypoint four, just because we have been going uh, up section. Yeah. Hey, Carly, you want to get the... the uh -huh. Ooh. Oh, sorry, that was me switching over to bucket cam, and somehow that wasn't happy. Um, then I get out the slurp, and we can... Yeah, I was thinking about what the best thing to do would be with that. You think Should we slurp or cut it? I think probably slurp it, right? I was leaning towards grab since it has that, like, Stock. outer tube. Mm. Yeah. Um, but I really don't know if it's gonna suck right into that. I don't know what it's gonna do. I think it'll, I think I think the slurp will probably be our best bet. Honestly, sure. we can go for it. Okay, we can just like like, like land it up it. right with the thing. Yeah, and like scoop it around, like scrape it off the edge. <laughs> Your face. <laughs> All right. Well, I got violent. <laughs> Zero to a hundred. <laughs> I'm just saying, this is the fun part, guys. Really, like, really <laughs> wicked grabs. <laughs> Not wicked because they're bad, but like just cool. Wicked, like, yeah, wicked. like from Boston. <laughs> it looks. Uh, yeah, well, I want to. I think we can let it swing back. Yeah. Cause we'll just be laid back here, and then, yeah, I think it'll be good. Okay. That way I'll be able to see what's going on. Oh. Uh, all right, Kylie, go ahead. Bridge, okay, this Raj. is Nav. Hold position, please. Thank you. Spicy. All right. Is this our little friend? No. No. Okay. No, no we have sure. it. Now we gotta we gotta go down a little bit more, don't we? Yeah, down to the left. Okay. Um, Kylie, yes. looks like it's on flush, so maybe it's been flushed already, but it will be going into three. Three. Raj. Raj. I get a better grip yeah, on that. There's, yeah. There's that no worries. Do you think? I'm going to just flush it while we're out here. Get back out. There's that we are at. That we passed earlier. Three. 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 I see no fluid flow. It's cool. Six, yeah? I'm not crazy, right? Six. Three? Wait, what? Oh, what's your question? Oh, yeah, Three? six. Three? Uh, six. <laughs> no. Six, yes, six. <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
<laughs> One. <laughs> Two. <laughs> Two. Don't distract me. <laughs> no, I'm not going to stop being funny. <laughs> Can we see it? It should be there. Yeah, it's right behind me still. I need to come down. I'm going to control the wind here too. Or left. Yeah, I'm still working on that delta here. Just now. Nice, yeah, once it gets into that side configuration, it's kind of a pain. Mm. Ah, we see it. No! Visual acquired. Oh. Yes, no. indeed. Nice. Good job, Jess. Alright. Hey, so this is going to go into sample tree. No, sample number three? Three. Roger. Sorry. No, you're good. No worries. Maybe, yeah, since the puck's kind of hard to get here and you don't have any viz, maybe try grabbing the schnozzle. The schnozzle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to grip force three. That'll do it. Raj. I was like, I did grip that before. I didn't go anywhere. Raj, maybe Raj. before, uh, like, turning on high suction, we could give it a poke and see if it like squeezes up into its tube. Roger that. Nice. Okay. Poke it first with the nozzle, yeah. You'd probably get it with the grip that you have now, actually. Yeah. But I meant like, like poke it with the suction, yeah? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um. Um, do you need, we have the zooms from before, yeah? Uh, yes. Yeah. Just poke it a bit. Go ahead and push on in there a bit, please. That's, that should be good there. Yep, go ahead, Kylie. Okay. There's no suction on, right? Nope. Raj. I think we should just give it the beans, because we can't really see much. I can mm -hmm. see it in the um, bubble. Can you guys see it in the bubble? Yeah, I see that. So you, the nozzle, yeah, it's, it's currently up, so you'll have to go down. Nice. That's good. Okay. Hide, bud. We're going to get you. <laughs> see ya. <laughs> okay. All right. You got beans. You got some beans on there. Nice. I got them. Beautiful. Cool. Nicely done. So I hope the tube came with it. I don't know. I'll get out of here in a second. Yeah. We're at sixty yeah, percent. I don't think it came with it. Good. Very Try nice. giving it a little jog. Right. Full wide there, please. Oh, 
number. Which number it will be, sample? It's going to be 72. 70% suction. Did they sample any rocks with this or anything that could have clogged the hose? Um, they did sample a another anemone. I think you can do 100%, yeah? Yeah, might as well at this point. I don't see any flow going in there, though. No, I don't either. Is it aligned properly? Is it like stuck between two again? Is he in the nozzle? I don't, I don't know. I no, you saw him. Did you see him go through? Yeah, Raj. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm not seeing any flow. Okay, I'm going to zero it here. Roger. I'm going to chossel. Oh, that one's well, that's the, other that's the other anemone. Now we're not getting any reverse, so that's cool. So let's just. Stand by. Huh. Where are you? Bud, what are you doing? Oh, oh now I got stuff coming one. through. Looks like spongy. Is that a reflection? <laughs> There's definitely something that moved yeah. that wasn't the reflection. I don't see anything in the hose. It's just not looking happy. Yeah, I don't see anything in the That's hose either. So Do you weird. I want to take your bubble for a second. Sure, yeah. Do it again. Oh, uh, doesn't look stuck there. Okay. Uh, Unless he's in, no, I saw him go. Did it, we all saw him go, right? I'm I, not yeah, gaslighting myself. We didn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe uh, shake it like. Shake it like a marker. <laughs> <laughs> like a marker. <laughs> or like a poly, what was it? Hey, 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 wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. <laughs> wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. All the dance moves. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, you want to move it a little definitely. bit out of the way? And we'll do a zoom on that, a tight zoom on that. that. You miss put it like here or yeah, let's stow perfect. it? Yes. Raj, okay. Uh, indexed. Okay, go ahead and push on in there a bit, please. Okay. Yeah, definitely got him. Yeah. I wouldn't, yeah. I wonder if it wasn't, if it wasn't properly aligned, if uh, it went. It went in like, kind of got stuck. I also or can't just tell. come in. Is that the tube? Like, did the tube actually not come? It's at least part of the tube, I think. We can just vacuum that area, too. But we're not seeing any flow, which is yeah. surprising. I mean, do you yeah. have any more zoom, Brad? Yes, I do. I can fan up a little bit. Oh, that was a guess. Yeah, that's just the nubbin that's left. You're sure? We can, we can vacuum no. it up if you'd like. Yeah, if there is flow. Yep. Hey, come wide, please. Right. Vacuum it. Vacuum. Raj. Where are you? It is concerning that we don't see yeah. a vortex in there, though. Agreed. Yeah. Um, oh, there. I just saw a little. Vo there's some flow. Unless that was on the outside of the bucket. I know. It's so hard. Did you just turn <laughs> it on? I, yeah, I just jostled it. Yeah, I can't tell. Yeah. Yeah, that's not a good sign. Slurp might be offline. So well, what if it's just blocked? Yeah, it's still offline. Uh, go ahead and push it. Oh, yeah. Nice. I think the bubble's going to be your friend. Maybe it did retract in there. Yeah, it looks like that stock in bubble looks bigger than I thought. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Oh, maybe Bubble's not my friend. Oh, shoulder. <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna reposition myself a little bit. Yeah, if you want, you can nice. put the slurp on the rock and then re-pick it up. Yeah, no, I'm okay. I don't, I just wanted to get my shoulder out of the way, you know? Yeah. Do I have any flow? Yep, you have 80%. Roger. Hmm. It looks like... Uh, I don't... 
It doesn't look like it's pulling that hard. Yeah, it looks like it ha there's definitely flow there. Oh, which is yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think you'll have to re grip it, Kylie. Hold on. I don't know. You're so close. Yeah. A little schmear. Scrape and slurp. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, I can't tell what that is. We got something in there. Yes. Small plastic. Give me. Give me this. Oops, sorry. Yeah. Okay, well, hold on. Um. Do we try slurping up the thing next to it to be like, does that come through? Yeah, we could try that little yellowy bit yeah. if you want. It's not going to get confused with it, so. Just to know if the slurp is offline or not. Can you just bubble down for me a little bit? Thanks. Top or bottom? Whatever looks easier. Do you want us to, do you want to cut the tube? Take it with us? Right. Okay, it looks like something came through there now. Okay, oh, sorry, I realize different grip. not an SPL. Yeah, I think different grip will be your friend. Raj. So I'm gonna zero flow here, and then I would use the rock and have it prop up the slurp. Like, like put it there? Yeah, Oops. or even further into that crevice. Have it. It's not going to slam back? It might, but if it does, it's okay. Okay. Okay, Raj, that's that, good enough. That's probably a better grip than it slopping before. Raj. I think it's, yeah, fine if we give up on the sample. Just nice to know if the slurp is working or not. Yeah, I think the slurp's working. Okay. Nice. That's a that's a way good grip. Yeah, nice. That's awesome. All right. I'm going to increase flow here. All right, go ahead and push on in there a bit, please. That's good. Maybe come a little wide. That's good. All right, yeah, this will get you, this will get it. Here, let's get this lined up. That's not it. Yeah. Roger. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Uh, sorry. Okay. This might be why it's on the wish list. <laughs> <laughs> We're oh, committed sweet. now, guys. Oh, we yeah. got some in there. stuff oh, in there okay. now. Try scraping up. Yeah, yeah. We've got to wait and see. Okay, glad slurp is working. That looks oh, good. Oh, there it is. Oh, my God. Yay. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Suction. This is great. That's a really cool. <laughs> what an accomplishment. Nice job. Good that was job. not easy. Yeah. Team. Dedication. Awesome. Yeah. Very cool.
let the dust settle there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Great. Excellent. You want an equal Thanks. white there, Red? I am. All right. Great. Oops, sorry. Yeah, you're good. Okay. And next. Cool. That was very <laughs> solid. Cool. Yeah. That was an emotional roller coaster. I it thing. was. I, I I heard Leela be like, we don't have to, you know, we can. I know I can. And tell I was like, no. To switch, you were like, <laughs> we've got this far. <laughs> we're doing this. We're regripping and we're trying again. <laughs> it paid off. I'm solid. glad. We'll take a look at it in a hot sec. Uh, all right. So let's shall we? Go yeah. Back. Yeah. Let's, let's do, do it. Moving again. <laughs> <laughs> let's re re rechase our steps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for letting us uh, get that. Yeah, that was yeah. awesome. Bridge, this is awesome. Snap. Good job. Thank really you. Uh, 50 meters to north, zero, zero, zero. Okay to do a, um, a gauge check? Yeah, sure thing. Oops. I want to see it now. <laughs> <laughs> Settle Settle out. Out. <laughs> Simmer down. Fine grain calcareous ooze. We gotta start checking stuff off the wish list for beginning a lot of it. Yeah, it'd be good to do a catch up on that. Yeah. So as Christopher was saying earlier, we are back in Papahanao Mokuakea Marine National Monument after running just outside the boundaries to beat some weather. Seems like stuff has been clearing up for us pretty well. And uh, Within the monument, we're under um, permit, so we really do minimal collection, but where it will help um, us understand a species or a range, it is allowed under the permit to collect a sample, a biological sample. You have a little uh, baby. Um. Yeah, yeah, I wonder what it's gonna update to. Flow is kind of crazy, Val. <laughs> so, is the plan to head up to Waypoint Four next? Yeah. Yeah, since we had that little preview, we know that uh, uh, just above here, the hyaloclastite uh, outcrop uh, ends, and we start moving back into uh, basalts that look a lot like what we've seen uh, uh, for most of this dive. So um, as we continue transiting up to waypoint four, we're going to look for a, uh, for a rock grab, if anything looks suitable. If not, we keep uh, we keep surveying.
Looks like we're moving already back into pillow basalt territory. And these look pretty crusted over with the uh, ferromanganese. Mm. And at least for the moment, not quite as much life as what we were seeing down section. But as we pan up, um, yeah, I should shut my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting cute kudos from our viewers for a great job sampling that last one. It was tricky. Tricky, tricky. You're not on SPL. Yeah, so we'll be looking for a rock, rock grab here at some point, and then if we find a uh, dense community, uh, it would uh, the plan is to uh, get a water sample for eDNA analysis or looking at the environmental DNA load. So that'll be a couple of objectives that we'll have coming up soon. We have a, another of those uh, sponges up there in the upper right. Yeah. That one has a pretty beefy stalk on it. I think that that's a bamboo skeleton. Yep. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. What was what was uh? Huh. Try turning off the uh. uh Becca, we're gonna uh, secure power to the Ethernet bottle real quick, and uh, we have a bit of a ground fault, so we're just checking it oh, out. Oh. Okay. okay. Oh yeah. Wow. Well. Yeah, we'll stand by then. Sure thing. See if that updates it. The second one to try out would be the craft power because I heard there was a ground fault on the craft earlier. Uh, I think. Oh yeah, that's it. I think maybe we should let the other one update. But yeah, let's try with the craft power off as well. I don't hear you, um, Justin. Oh, okay. So it might, it might not be that, but let's let it update for a minute, see if it's, make sure it's still there. Oh, nice, okay, so it's either Sexton or the Craft Power. My guess would be the Craft. Yeah. Raj. Like we're uh, <coughs> moving across uh, a uh, another pile of hyaloclastites. We were in uh, pillow basalts for a little while. Yeah, Is that so little polychaete that we just passed. Yeah, I oh, missed it. Sorry, I missed it. Yeah. No worries. You have other more important things to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Solide has a. Uh, uh, some uh, interesting. We'll make another move, see, to north. Raj. Press this is now. Uh, another move, same step, please. And so it looks like as we uh, traverse up this ridge on uh, Solidae, we're seeing uh, Raj. slightly more uh, complex geology than what we've been see uh, seeing on some of the previous dives with uh, kind of this intermixing of um, what appear to be uh, hyaloclastite deposits and uh, uh, 
uh, pillow basalts. Mainly, though, we've been seeing uh, pillow basalts uh, since the start of this dive. Um, front row, can you l let me know if you end up turning back on the Ethernet bottle and I'll restart still cam and stuff like that? Um, Kylie, if you're speaking, I can't hear you. Um, I said it is, they're both currently on, but I, we are troubleshooting with them still. Yeah. Okay. Just let me know whenever, whenever you decide if it'll be on or not. Yeah. It's refreshed a few times. Yes. So I, I think we're okay going forward. Lila, I think it's all set. It's going to be on. Okay. Okay. Go ahead and push on in there a bit, please. Lila, that's a ball IQ, right? Yeah. Yeah. Good spot on Oh, that. yeah. Nice. That's so cool how they move. Wow. Do you want to try for closer? Sure. Well. Can they keep up? <laughs> Book it. Wow, I this like. is some good coordination, you two. Yeah, well done. Nice focusing, yeah. Yeah. Ooh, great Very job, nice. Jess. All right. Goes exit screen. The and cinematic yeah. way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is it. That looks oh, right. please. And what was that called? Polykey, right? Yeah, I don't know more than what, I don't know what kind of polykey, but. Sure. Some kind of polykey worm. Cool. Ooh, cool. Oh, looks like it had a long day. Ha <laughs> <laughs> Has the 12 to four and it's already 4 a.m. for it, I think. <laughs> <you know? laughs> That was definitely how I looked by around where I am this morning. <laughs> <laughs> you want your starboard bio camera? Yeah, you want to switch it back to flush and then we yeah. Can. I was trying to see if it would settle, but I know <laughs> doesn't look like we're gonna get a picture of it till it's on deck. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like another one of those. That white sea stars purple. Always. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, There's yeah. a couple different species Pretty that white sea star could have been. I always mix them up. Henry oh, okay. or something else. Thank you. You're welcome. So for anyone just joining us, we are a little over nine hours into a uh, planned 22-hour dive on the Solidation What are Mount. you? Is that a hole? There might be a hole. Wait, might it just what? be a hole. Never mind. False alarm. Reg, continue, Christopher. We are moving up a ridge, the, currently on the southern side um, of a ridge leading up to the top, moving toward our next waypoint. And we expect to go from, I think we started at uh, 2,000 meters. Yep. And we're going to go up to around 1,400 meters depth is the plan. Should cover, I think, 3.3 kilometers. As we've been rising up the ridge, our O2 concentration has been going down. Which is interesting. Getting in towards the oxygen, oxygen minimum soon. Yeah. I would say that explains the lack of uh, coverage of uh, animals on this rock face, but as we saw the other day, we were in the oxygen minimum zone and we and couldn't find a, a bare rock in the place. Yeah. So yeah. there may not be a... All sponges all day, that dive. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, I'm also not seeing a whole lot um, as far as geology opportunities. Uh, everything's looking pretty, uh, pretty locked into place. 
or really altered, like in there. Yeah, it looks like it's got some sediment uh, yeah. that's collected in there. What is that? Fish. Oh. Well, good eye. Oh. Yeah. Oh, sure enough. I caught it in this picture. Oh, it's framed itself so nicely. <laughs> <laughs> Knew we were coming. Go ahead and push on in there a bit, please. Hello. Ooh. Hi, buddy. Mike. Huh. Oh, those are under the eel-like fish, I think. On the weird face. I don't think it's on the common one. What a cutie. It's always easier if I can see its tail, too, but, uh, yeah. let's see. Sorry. Oh, I don't think we can do that. I think I'm right there a little bit. Let's get there. That's an aphidiaform fish. Bethidae, maybe? All right, pull away, please. Is the ground fault issue cleared up? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's an aircraft. It's in the manipulator. Okay. Par for the course. <laughs> Same story. <laughs> Not a whole lot going on over here. Mm -mm. It's quite the change. We're getting pretty close here to waypoint four. So I guess we'll just uh, see what's there. Thanks, woman. Looks like it should flatten out a little bit. Yeah. At the waypoint. There's a few loose rocks in there. They look pretty uh, crusty. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything that looks super great. Yeah. Not yet. Something will come up. I mean, we still have a lot of dive to go to, so. Val, I find it really funny how on when Beth's watch comes on, they just like pick up everything. We're <laughs> 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 like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, what is that? It's an anemone. It looks like another anemone of some sort. Lower left? Or just like anything, something, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where? Yeah, we gotta push on in there a bit, please. Oh, look how beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, sorry, settling down a little bit still. Botryoidal. Up Very in botryoidal. Here. <laughs> It also means we got to look for float because that is not going to break off too easily. No, no, it's not. There's yeah. like a, a shell, some kind of a bivalve yeah. on the right. Yeah, and that looks like the tube of. I was going to say, it looks like another tube. And they're all yeah. hidden up in there. And they know what happened to their. Yeah, friend. they're like, we heard <laughs> what you did. <laughs> they come partial right there. That's good. It's a pretty little snail or something right there too. Yeah, I think they're. They look like bivalves or gastropods or something. Pull away, please. They're not gastropods, sorry. Uh, bivalves or uh, brachiopods. Brachiopods, yeah. Next move will be 350. 350, Reg. Oh, Roger. Reg, this is Nav. Uh, next move, uh, 350, 30 meters. That's correct. Yeah, so I've been working on some of the samples that we collected uh, yesterday and early in uh, the wee hours of the morning. And uh, we are starting to see some thicker manganese crusts show up on some of these uh, uh, seamounts. So 
Seems that Soliday might be following that pattern, mm. but I have no clue what that means. <laughs> we'll see what happens when uh, we cut some of these rocks open, um, presumably tomorrow. It's an interesting little Chrysogorgid. Oh, the one that's just going off screen yeah. now? Yeah. Did you want to look at it? Sure. Yeah, let's take a quick look. Looks like it has a shrimp or something hanging out on it. Yeah. Oh, and there's another one of your uh, polychaetes swimming around right there, too. Oh, yeah. Good eye. I remember scuba diving off of, uh, <laughs> just off the continental shelf of Curacao, and you'd see all sorts of Christmas tree worms. Mm. Oh my gosh, those corals. are so cool. And you will oh, look at that. There is approach a them and they squat lobster in there with pretty long yeah. front. Yeah, they oh, come yeah. in all sorts of colors. You approach them and they just swoop up. I've caught myself really bad on their tubes, actually. They, oh no. They have like this really sharp edge. I never actually Pull touched any, but we, but, um, just swimming by closely was enough to get them to kind of go shloop. Yep. Yeah. I really pretty. spent a lot of time doing some underwater photography, trying to get like the perfect shots of those without them getting all scared and swooping away. Oh, that sounds really challenging. Yeah. I got, I got some good ones. I can nice. show you later. I like that. I'm oh, sorry. I like that the verb that you use also has a nice sound to it. Shloop. <laughs> what, shloop? Yeah, it's shloop. Onomatopoeia. One of my cats yeah. has a uh, I'm gonna one come of those up a little bit. tunnels yeah. that they can crawl through, and he's very good at slooping around in the tunnel <laughs> when he wants to play. Isn't that a, a part of a 90s song, too? Shloop. Yeah. <laughs> Salt <Pepper. laughs> Yeah. You're pretty is. close. <laughs> <laughs> Was that Salt Pepper? It might have been. You have a possible ID on that fish we saw a little bit ago from one of our viewers. They think it might be a Catatix hawaiiensis based on the lines on the head. Mm. Okay. Yeah. A lot of those pathetidids looked pretty similar. Oh, hey, Asako. Um, yeah, we did collect another uh, tube anemone a little bit ago. Um, not without its, uh, its own drama. <laughs> It was uh, it was a little different than the purple one that uh, uh, one of the previous shifts collected. This one was more of a dark red in color. And we're coming into a field of cop corals again. Yeah. Yeah, quite a number out there. Yeah. I'm still looking for a place for. Sea star. Yeah. Any rock, any yeah. eDNA where that might be uh, useful. Look at this long wire right here. Oh, yeah. Probably bamboo. Mm. Wow, it's gorgeous. Yeah. And so many big cup coral again. Yeah. Go ahead and push on in there a bit, please. That's great. Thank you. There's a lot going on in there. Mm -hmm. More of those uh, snot web things. <laughs> Did you call it a snot rocket? <laughs> no, it's not. It's <laughs> not web. Does that make it any better? <laughs> I don't know which one is better. <laughs> Raj. I don't know which one I like more. <laughs> it's not rocket, eh? Yeah. <laughs> That's what those are. <laughs> <laughs> We've solved a mystery. <laughs> Why, please? So we'll... Uh, we are almost at 12.4. Would you like to 
stay for some time over here or proceed to a waypoint five? Um, I'm not seeing a whole lot around here. Do you think we should? Yeah, let's let's start moving toward waypoint five. Raj. Oh, look, there's cool. another one of those maybe chitin things in the oh, bottom yeah, left. Oh, yeah, sure enough. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think we saw a few of those in the last couple of dives that were white in color. Now we're seeing the brown ones again. Are you talking about this, Leela? Yeah. Yeah. There's another one right here, I think. Oh, sure enough. Maybe? Yeah, yeah. I think. Go ahead and push out in there a bit, please. That thing is weird. Well, that's a weird puppy, yeah. The body's just overgrown for the shell. You gotta come a little yeah. right. Right, just such a big foot. That's What's the great point there? of having a shell? Big so foot. Cover everything. The big foot chitin. No, nobody? Okay, cool. It's like when you have a very relaxed cat who's fully intended Sorry, to take over away, your please. couch. I don't I know how they do it. So we'll be heading towards 055. 055, Raj. Go ahead and push that in there, man, please. So is this a good time to make jokes about um, cup, co cup corals overflowing? Oh. My cup overfloweth. Oh my god. With cup corals. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, That's now would be the time. My cup That was really cup lame. Coral over if you had a joke to tell, you should do it now, Val. <laughs> No, that was it. It was super late. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like Osako is identifying that chitin for us. Oh, a polyplacophora. Mm -hmm. You can you can feel the current again here, and you can kind of see it a little bit, too, with these little guys. Yeah, I was kind of wondering, because we're starting to see more polishing on the uh, manganese crust, too. Yeah. All right, I'm ready for you. Bridge, this is Nav. Pull away, please. Bearing 0 0.55, 50 meters. Affirmative. I follow you around. Edge. Sounds good. Yeah, current strong with this one now. Change mm -hmm. the joy game. Let's go. I thought you were doing a Star Wars reference there for a second. I was trying, and then I then I just then I just gave up. <laughs> 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 so, so sorry. I, I get you. <laughs> yeah, Sako confirms that that's uh, something we've seen on previous dives. I'm trying to remember which one. Was that our first or our second? Because our first was kind of in this area, and then the second it's was north. It's all a blur. <laughs> okay. It's a big mushroom coral down there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's crazy that this is only our fifth dive. I know. I know. An awful lot <laughs> it's just time, time warp, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the weather had different plans than we did. But it let up, you know, we, we we got to an interesting area because of it, had some really cool dives. That is yeah. very true. Yeah. Another, right here. One of those neon sponges. Yeah. This might have something yeah. you want. Black coral, bath bathies. Oh yeah, rubble for Val. Yeah. Uh, Could we stop and see if we can get one of these? Sure, you wanna stop the ship, oh, please? Say again? Uh, stop the ship. Bridge, this is Nav. Hold position here, please. I'm not in the okay, most thanks. ideal of places right now, but... I'm yeah, let's find a place that is more ideal. And, uh, yeah, we'll try to grab something. It oh, looks a big old something. I don't know. I don't know if you're going to have a lot of option past here. It looks like it firms up again. Uh, I think I see some rubble behind this this, uh, this small oh. boulder, the sides of a large boulder. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, I see what you're talking about, hopefully. Ooh, that is a big crinoid. That is. They uh -huh. are big on this seamount. Do you think this is going to be intact here? It looks probably like it, huh? Uh, hard to tell. It, yeah, it might be locked down, but we, I mean, if there's a place to sit down, we can kind of poke at things, I guess. Okay. It's kind of a weird channel. What I was think? just yeah. thinking the same thing. I was like, is this are normal? We are we between lava flows? Is there? this a tube? Yep. What about this rock here in front of us? Um, Pretty you're big looking now. at one of these two? Oh, yeah. okay. on the left one. Yeah, let's give those a try. If those don't work, the one this on looks, the left looks pretty good. Yeah, that yeah. looks a little looser if those other yeah, ones are that fused. Too. Okay. Bonus cup coral. All right. I'm here for bonus coral since we lost ours last night. 
All right, Kylie, you want to go ahead and get the... I'm trying to out? just uh, get set up here. Right. Sorry. Oh, this is going to go in the starboard pile, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right? Crap. For you, Val? Okay. Yep. Um, I'm not seeing anything that would be a uh, Beth sample. Could you telestrate it for me one more time? Sure. I think we're looking at that one as a primary target, and then there's another one just ahead of the scoop that okay. uh, Justin pointed out. Oh, one of those two. Somewhere over there. It looked a little looser. Might have been, yeah, it's either that one or that one that he found. So, Roger that. We've got another one of those mini-legged starfish over on the left side of the screen. Mm -hmm. mm. Sea oh, yeah. stars, yeah. not starfish. Look at you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some people also get really upset if I call soil dirt, so... <laughs> Yeah, well, sometimes it it's just dirt? whatever word is most convenient to the brain because other ones get stuck sometimes. Go ahead and push on in a little bit there, please, Rick. That's good. Oh, yeah, that. Yeah, that it's one might be stuck. Oh, this, this, one? One. this one looks looser. Oh, yeah, those yeah. are thoroughly. Looks attached. pretty uh, That's big. crusty, though, doesn't it? Yeah. Do we want one that big, Val? Um, That might be our only choice here. Okay. Now that we're pushed in, I can see that the one I was kind of eyeballing is. Uh, Oops. Very much sorry. Attack. Sorry, that was a me thing. Oops. That was a me problem. Just exercising. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just see if the ground is there. The ground is there. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Hey, nice. come here. That looks like you it's know what? That'll work. You okay. don't. You don't sound pleased. I. I, I no, hate I, I am pleased. Okay, Raj. I hate it. <laughs> I hated that. That'll work. Like I don't know. I just was like, well, I'll get a better one if you want it. <laughs> no, I apologize. <laughs> Go ahead and push nope. on in a bit there, please. We have a 66k ground fault, so we'll have to do this fast. Okay. Go ahead and rotate if, if it's not yeah, too yeah. jumpy. Now that's something that okay. I can make work on the saw. That'll be great. All right, okay. starboard it goes, and I can't okay. tell how big that is. I think that okay, come might on. be an E or yeah, an F. I think oh. it's gonna have to be Pull an E because the floaty sea star is an F. Right. Uh, so sorry, so there's floaty stuff in which one? Floaty and F, the slime star that Paul was <laughs> we were cheering for. <laughs> that had its, uh, a mind of its own. Yes, that one. Switching over cameras. Or, you know, was like stuck in front of a thruster. Sample. Okay. So floaty and F, Raj, okay. Well, hopefully we don't suck it out there with the thruster. Anything floating in the back ones as well? Uh, no, the rest is rocks. Right. If the Looks rocks like are floaty, then we're picking up the wrong rocks. Hey, <laughs> Raj. Oops, oops, uh, oops, 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 oops. Raj. Oh. Maybe elbow right. up a little bit there. Sorry. E? Uh, F e in the back. And then Raj. How about I kick the box out a bit Wait, more? Not F. Not, not F. F. Not F. That's, that has the floaty thing in it. Yes. Yeah. E. So, so E. It'd be cool. Oh, Jesus. Oh, that works. Sorry. Oh, nice. Nice. Not, not beautiful. <laughs> it was great. Oh, Jesus. It's okay. Okay. Can you just put the box in and I'll get that out of this out of here? Sure. Nope. That'll be a really lovely sample. Thank you. Gross. I, I cut open one that all good. No worries. That reminds me a lot of this one yeah, earlier today, and uh, Dies, it had some really good lava in it. That one looks like it will too. Cool. Are we gonna do a water sample here or no? Nope. No, that's only with breath samples, I think. Right. Yeah. Or eDNA, and this isn't a super densely populated area. Well, we do get some really big honking crinoids. Yeah, I think those are the Glyptometra or Glyp... What were those again? All right. I think Glyptometra. Let's secure this hydraulic. Yeah. All right. It must be a certain um, angle of the arm. Sorry? I said huh. it must be a certain angle of the arm because it has, like, such a variety of, like, the ground fault. Yeah, the ground fault makes it kind of jump like the azimuth and the shoulder just kind of do some weird stuff. But well, I meant like the value of it. It was went down to seventeen. Yeah, and then yeah, back like up 66. to like a regular. Yeah. Hmm. All right, 
Are we all happy here? I'm happy. Raj. I think everybody else is happy. Always happy. Good. <laughs> Keep moving. Yes, please. Zero six zero. Zero six zero, Raj. Bridge, this is nap. Zero, zero six zero fifty meters. Affirm. So it looks like we'll be going on a pretty gradual slope for a little while. Mm-hmm. Kind of a nice easy stroll over to waypoint five. Mm -hmm. Yep, we're about halfway through the dive at this point and coming up on about the halfway point of our uh, planned transit, so I'd say we're making excellent time. That whole thing's Good covered news. with cup coral. Wait, well, lots of cup corals on this little you. knob thing. Thank you. Uh, I feel like I need to pick Ryan's brain about <clears throat> this distribution. Cause he was mentioning earlier that um, cup corals tend to cluster. And that apparently the, this more even distribution is a little unusual. It looks like there's bigger stuff off in the distance. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's spongy over there, isn't it? At least a little bit. A few sponges, yeah. Seeing okay. more Not marine. much. <laughs> it's a cool little ridge, oh, ridgy the thing pile. here. <laughs> that is a big pile of yep. rubble. Is it zero five five zero six zero? Which one? Five zero six zero six. Gosh. Not sure what th exactly is going on here, but there's a like big old mm. crack oh, yeah. yes. coming through the crust. Val, if you had to guess, what do you think made that crack? No idea. No idea. I'd have to see what's under it. I'm going to need some more content or I'm going to fall asleep seafloor. <laughs> <laughs> so what are these yellow uh, organisms that we're passing? This is the second one I've seen in the last few seconds. Those are the really big yellow crinoids. I think they're glyptometra. Okay. But yeah, crinoids um, related to sea stars. 
Cool. Kind of just different kind of derms. It's kind of cool watching them swim. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and push on in there a bit, please. It's like they're riding a bike almost. That's a pearl star. Oh, star wow. Star. Here. Cup coral. So, a little mini sponge. sponge. <laughs> tiny little sponge. <laughs> not it's a so tiny. Not a suggestion, but if we frightened this, would it swim away? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure. Aren't some of them sessile? Yeah, some not all of them are mobile. Mm -hmm. But that one does, like, these do have really big, like, sort of lower arms too it looks like so I don't, I don't know maybe it, it looks really posted up where it is right now yeah it looks like that brittle star is waving high at us yeah <laughs> hey <laughs> i'll stop anthropomorphizing uh -huh. <laughs> no we appreciate that i mean <laughs> we did catch a swimming black crinoid i think um on our last dive oh, I, please. yeah we did i think it was the purple one that we uh, collected too yeah well, that was one of those green things that we caught on camera oh my too. gosh don't even <laughs> don't even point that out to me i don't want to know anymore <laughs> okay fair enough. whatever happened with that what, last time whatever what did that happen to it just, <laughs> just let it go <laughs> it counted it got counted as a sample and there's a teeny teeny amount and it is in a vial now in ethanol and if anyone wants to extract that dna and try and figure out what it is they can Sounds so. like you have a, a love-hate relationship with it. Yeah. <laughs> I really want someone to know what it is, but I'm also frustrated that I, you, we could, like... That was a hard sample to collect. Yeah. A oh, no, there was... A lot of stuff coming No out. way. Yeah. Well, and I think with it, I was picturing not a sea cucumber, but, like, a sea cucumber-like organism, mm -hmm. and that it was, like had a thickness to it and mm. then it just didn't yeah, it was very very thin yeah what do you think that is right so there um sea star that is a good mm, question not not sea star urchin, urchin? anemone yeah, anemone it does look a little urchin -y. Go ahead and push on it a bit. Urchin. Urchin. Oh. Oops, sorry. Cool. Overshot sure that. Gonna come a little white. We haven't seen that many. That's good. That's so Urchins pretty. like this. It has one of your snot rockets attached. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Snot rockets. laughs> they are now my here. snot rockets. <laughs> They're all mine. <laughs> Leila, look at all your snot rockets. I know, I'm <laughs> so <laughs> proud of each and every single one of them. They made it all the way down there. You make so much <laughs> snot. Go ahead and see <laughs> yeah. Oh, it looks so sweet and scary at the same time, <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> sweet because it's a rosy pink. It yeah, reminds like you of those like spider webs that you put around your bushes on Halloween. You totally. Know? <laughs> and that's oh. what's going on here. That's what I feel. It's yeah, it a little spooky down these uh, at these depths. Spooky. All right. What's, away, please. what's the right kind of tool to handle a um, uh, urchin with? Like, because I know you, not your gloved hand isn't going to do it. Yeah. Yeah, I Just usually use a super fancy tool called a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna. I was gonna wonder if it was gonna be tongs yeah. or something, yeah, or if they would like. Okay. Push yeah, the, the spines the can be snap. pretty delicate, and the tests mm, are also you. sometimes thin and delicate. Yeah. So okay. Try not to crush them. More of a scoop. Totally. Same move, please. Oh, I'm seeing the right general kind of <coughs> manganese cross characteristics to grab path the sample, but down on the delta there, please. Yeah, I know. Nothing grabbable. Oh, that's so frustrating. It seems like the viz here is a little better than... Like clearer water? Zero, six, zero. Yep. Yeah, like the water has a little less in it than in the last few dives we did. Hmm. Huh, interesting. Because I'm noticing when I... I can raise the iris to a brighter level than I could in the mm. other locations without blowing huh. it up. Well, you would hate to dive on the shelf. <laughs> oh. It is murky. OK, 
Okay, I'm gonna hold off on this on this step here. One of our viewers wishing us a happy Easter. Well, Thank you. Happy Easter. Thanks. Is it that day? It is that day already. What you see, Justin? On the bottom right. Oh, right by the lasers. Looks like a crinoid. Nope. Uh, uh, no, past the center. Yeah. yeah. Oh, right maybe right? another one. Yeah. yeah. Never mind. Is that just a mushroom coral here? That yeah, that's what I was looking at too. I don't. It doesn't look like a mushroom coral. Now it's kind of flat. Yeah. Probably an anemone. Kind of looks like an anemone to me too. An anemone. Like that's pretty hard to say. An anemone. It's like anemone. 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 Enemies. Enemy. <laughs> yeah, it big is. stocked something coming up. Not a whole lot on it. Yeah, it looks like a anemone for sure. Yeah. All right, for I'm sure. gonna whip around to the other side real quick and uh, get in front of Atlanta. Sounds good. Well, we're not gonna whip. It's, it's very slow. It's really flat right here. the toe of a lava flow here, perhaps. I'm wondering why we chose the south side of the ridge instead of the north side to, to stick to. Hmm. What direction does the current seem to be coming from? What are you, you're facing? Into the current right now, Jess? North, um, east? Yep. Or less, yep. Northeast current. So I guess if it's coming from the northeast and this is sort of a northeast oriented ridge, it didn't really matter what side we picked. A lot of rubble there. I don't know. Getting into some kind of low bait looking uh, lava flows. It's interesting that there's like really big ones and then there's the smaller rocks and not a whole lot in the middle. Yeah, this <clears throat> this is not not entirely uncommon for uh, lava st stratigraphy. You know, you get these lava flows that kind of finger out and uh, kind of interweave around and on top of each other to grow the volcano. So you kind of end up with a sort of a hummocky, uneven uh, uh, surface. You can see stuff that is a little reminiscent of this, um, but the uh, subaerial version, if you go up on uh, Mauna Loa on uh, Big Island of Hawaii. But these to my eye look uh, submarine. Sub aerial is always so counterintuitive because right. I want it. I want it to be like below where the air is, as in underwater. But it's I just know. like below in the sky. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's a uh, eruptive above the waterline, but it's not being ejected into the atmosphere. Mm. So yeah, it is. It is a very strange word, and it took me a little while to get that yeah. straight too. Sea star. This is a cool feature. It yeah. is. The Atalanta view is cool too. Yeah. All right, if you want to zoom in on Atalanta, feel free. Yeah. That's 
That's good. That's a cool slow pan. I like that. Thanks. Or slow zoom, not pan. Zoom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Sure. One of the Camera options. terms. <laughs> <laughs> Filmmaking. Hey, I enjoy all the different kind of jargon uh, going on in this van. <laughs> All right, so I'm kind of on the lookout in the rubble for anything with a botryoidal texture, but I don't know if we're going to see anything. Okay. That one looks a little bit. That's a pretty big one. I don't Is know it? if that's grabbable. I have no sense of scale right now. Yeah, <laughs> let's let's keep things moving a little oh, bit. Oh yeah, Something the lasers like are pretty tiny over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, there they are. I wasn't seeing them. Yeah. So we're we're kind of looking, looking at this a from a little bit above it, I think. Oh, that would be a good one, except it's just huge. <laughs> that is not a candidate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you said only bigger than fifteen centimeters, right? So nope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I should have been more clear about that note. But it's fine. That's a cool shot. That is a cool shot. Oh, there's another brittle star kind of looking like he wants to. Yep, Ooh. he just hopped off. <laughs> We've seen that a Goodbye. couple times recently. <laughs> Peace, I'm out. <laughs> Yeah, the shot from Atalanta is what really brings it home for me, like makes the mm -hmm. the actual location real. Yeah, contextualizes it. Mm -hmm. For sure. It's a nice shot. Mm hmm Looks like that pillow just sheared off. Yeah. What is this? Is that another one of those pom-poms? Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. Missed it. That dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then that Keep looks moving. like a tube coral on that boulder. We'll yeah. go zero five zero. Reg. Makes me think of macaroni. Reg, this is Nev. Uh, it's Look a sea star. Bearing zero five zero. Sure enough, it is meters. a fun-looking sea star. It's another one of those. So you want the slime star? Affirmative. Maybe look at it. Yeah. yeah. Opportunistic zoom in passing. Oh yeah. Go ahead and push on in there, please. Awesome. Oh. Oop, Lumpy. Maybe, maybe not a tube sponge. I think that's one of those slime stars, yeah. right? Yeah. Still thinking about macaroni, though. Oh, my God. Stop it, Val. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of a thing that I would eat. I was, like, walking in circles in the mess, but I would eat that. <laughs> kind of reminds me of grapefruit a little bit. A it little does. bit, yeah. Do you have a little more zoom there? I do. It's a big guy, about Ooh, 10 yeah. centimeters. Ooh, very Look at that nice. texture. Matches the rock he's sitting on. Batriota texture. <laughs> Batriota slime star. Yeah. Okay, sorry, you want to come a little wide now? Yeah. Thanks. We had a question about uh, whether these sea mounts have ever been above the surface. Mm -hmm. That is a good question. Oh, please. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Geodes, we haven't really been on top. We've been on geodes, which means they had to be above the surface at some point, because that's how they flattened out, was through the erosion. So that's the thing we're looking for if they have a flat top. It's very likely. Maybe. Why did they flatten out if they were an island at some point versus uh, not as much if they weren't? Let's say the wind and rain erosion. And wave. May, might wave, also be wave due to erosion. size too. Yeah, you get mm. um, you get those flatter tops and those uh, steeper sides, kind of uh, developing by little uh, flank failures. 
Right, because I'm just thinking that a lot of goats, the top is still quite deep, you know, and it's flat, so it's interesting. That it is. It seems counterintuitive that it would just be related to it being above the surface at that point. Yeah, because we've, we've seen, okay, uh, just to preface, these are still seamounts I'm thinking of that are tens of millions of years old, so... Uh, we we do see some of that morphology in some s in some slightly younger seamounts too, and I just don't know if I don't I don't know how much that subsidence would be in some of these areas. Mm -hmm. For Hawaii, well, okay, never mind. This isn't Hawaii. <laughs> yeah, where are and, we at now? <laughs> um, I was going to use Hawaii as an analog, and then realized it really doesn't analog this very well. So. I feel like that's, is that, that's what I always, have always learned about geodes, how they formed, but maybe we never got into the complexities. There's so many complexities. Sometimes I feel like I don't know anything about the mantle because there's mm -hmm. just so many questions. Like, you know, ocean island development and stuff like that. There's just so much that we haven't seen that is recorded in, you know, written history, oral histories. Yeah. Just there's more a information. Do you, show, huh? do you mind if we do a DVL reset again? Okay. Uh, which, this one? Yeah, right Do there. you know if Beth, how Beth feels about having multiple? She doesn't yeah, want the rock ahead. samples together in the same compartment, Thank right? Thank uh, we've would already collected one, so I'm thinking, like, you know, then there's only one more left on this dive. Yeah. Unless. Uh, I, I think she has it in the plan to collect up to three. Right. So maybe. I don't but know if that know meant going in starboard. Yeah. Well, if we don't see anything, we can ask her when she comes on shift. Yeah. Right, are you full wide on Atalanta no. right now? No. Uh, let me check. No, you're not. Oh, do you mind if I go? Do you want to be? I just want to see where my oh, the tether. tether can yeah, go, go for back it. in. Okay, great. Okay, you can go back in now. There's a partial. Ugh, because it's barf cam. <laughs> <laughs> it's barf cam. <laughs> yeah, well, when the when the ship heaves, then I get all wonky. Oh, no. It's barf cam. I do like the name barf cam. <laughs> <laughs> so we have snot rockets and barf cam. We really are. Uh, <laughs> Really, uh, <laughs> to a fall on our watch, aren't we? <laughs> Are these viable shift names? <laughs> oh, <God>. Barf <laughs> Team Barf Cam. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> we no, have more you. pride than that. <laughs> <laughs> Zero to Barf. <laughs> So if you could take home any of the creatures that we have found, oh. have one creature as a pet. Have as a pet. What would it be? <laughs> Oof. Oh, I know. Mine would be the Chonoclops. Chonoclops, oh, they're so cute. Chonoclops. The little mouth thing, I was looking back at the pictures of that, the little mouth extension, so weird. Yeah, so crazy. That would be high on my list too. Chana clubs, but I, I have like a love hate relationship with the crinoids. I think that's <laughs> it's just so Lovecraftian. <laughs> <laughs> that's very blocky. It is very blocky. I think I might that bring home great. a squat lobster. Oh, <laughs> what do you name Squatty? Squatty. <laughs> They'd be fun to feed. <laughs> A lot of these look welded together, too. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, that looks like an urchin. Yeah, probably. Or one of those lilies. Yeah. <laughs> I should look at the big screen. It's probably easier. Man, they were seeing all that big coral. 
Where'd it go? Go back. What's the What's the dive plan trajectory look like? It's gonna get steep again. Um, I think it keeps going up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Keep moving. Yeah, uh, yeah, let's keep moving. We're at, I guess, the flattest part of the side. They five, really seven. got the steep part here. Yeah. Bridge, this is nav. Zero five zero fifty meters. I wonder what it's like, like just down, down here. Yeah, that could be interesting. Who knows? It's weird that feeling, like if you don't peek around the corner, nobody ever will, and we'll just I never know. know. Look at this guy, probably just a crinoid. Thank you. I still have this yeah, tucked under so. that ledge. I need to let you know. Thank you. I'm trying to. How can I say just a crinoid? They're actually very cool. So. We are in more oxygenated waters around here than we ha than we were a little earlier, so. Doesn't seem to be strongly coupled to population density. What is the whitish speckle that we see on the rocks here? Is that just sediment or is that a biofilm of some kind? Um, in some places it was barnacles. Yeah, uh, I don't think it was here. You haven't seen barnacles. We saw those arborescent forams yeah. in one place. That was the other thing. Um, but this looks sort of like sediment. I don't know. Some of it, yeah. Maybe most of it. Some sponge cars. Yeah. It's really interesting how this there's all these kind of channels have really broken up. Mm -hmm. I'm curious about the food chain down here. Like we know that the sea stars will eat the coral. So we've seen that happening. And there are plenty of filter feeders or suspension feeders, but there's some other stuff like, I wonder what the fish are eating. I wonder what the urchins are eating. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, we've already gotten something like five geology samples, so we're, we're not in a huge hurry to pick up more. Yeah. But as we keep going up section, it's it's usually a good idea to pick up some sort of representative every now and again. <coughs> I don't know about you guys, but I'm enjoying the rocks. This is a nice view. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking about what a pain it would be to hike up this. <laughs> oh, yeah. This, this stuff is... Uh, this, it's a very uneven territory trying to hike on lava flows like this. My ankles could never. Uh-huh. Like, if you're hiking around on the lava fields on Kilauea or Mauna Loa, you have to be really careful with the pahoyhoys because sometimes they um, uh, will drain out and just leave a thin crust, and you don't want to break through that. It's not because you're going to fall into, like, hot lava or anything. It's just it's really hard on your ankles. And it's usually kind of sharp, too. So you need, like, you need really good ankle high boots. Sometimes you see uh, drained out uh, pillows in some of these deposits too, so What's similar kind of left? process. Okay, bye friend. That's Is that one of those like spindly Walteri Walteria? <clears throat> um, Walteria Fleming Eye? I don't know oh. if this is Fleming Eye, but it looks like Walteria. Oh, that's like that's its own thing too. Mm, yeah, so Walteria is the genus, and then Fleming Eye is the species. <gasps> so there are other Walteria as well. That, so, are they all named for that guy, or is just the Fleming one named for that guy, and that's a coincidence? Right. That's um, such a good question. 
Maybe they just named that one. They were like, this is too good to be true. Right, <laughs> like it's so, it's almost on the nose. <laughs> They're so tidy. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, kind of reminds me of like a asparagus. Nope. What do you think? Not spiky asparagus. You think it looks a little bit more like the Walteria lucarti? Mm. The central structure matches that idea a little bit. And we were seeing a lot of Baltier Lucardi on some previous dives. Yeah, it's definitely uh, sediment right, covering away, the rocks here. I don't see any little critters. Thank you. Osako agrees that it's some sort of Walteria. <laughs> yeah, the sediment load might not be helping with the population density, too. The classic dilemma. Ooh, Ooh that, that looks, looks like a Ferraid. That mm. was a surprise. Yeah, we haven't seen I wasn't this morphology. <laughs> yet yeah can we get a closer look at that please yeah sure thing thank you go ahead and push on in a bit there nice that one looks nice and healthy it's do you beautiful. want the lasers on or off for the shot we could do an off quick yeah thank you thank you thank you Do you want porch for the bottom to be lit, or you like this? I mean, I like this, but I'm just offering. I think this looks good. Ooh, oh. I thought for a, but Thank from you. the front, it looks different. Mm. That uh -huh. is so Gorgina. pretty. Ooh, we have graceful. an associate. Yeah. <laughs> shrimp, shrimp associate. I love the lighting on this. Yeah, it looks like a cool. What are those called from the past? Don't know. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. the, um, oh, the gramophone. Oh, gramophone. Yeah. Yeah. Gramophone. Thank you. It's a gramophone sponge. <laughs> I like that. That would be a good name for totally, sponge. Totally, yeah. Sorry, I'm a little too close to this guy now. It's a cool sponge, though. Very yeah. cool. I'm curious. Actually, never mind. Never mind. Full away, please. Yeah, so the Walteria that we saw, uh, Sako says that um, that's a species originally described in Japanese waters. Oh, cool. Hmm. Another sponge. Oh, nice. Different, different kind. Lots of brittle stars on it. Push on in on this guy too. Looks There's like so it has many of them. Those bissel threads, but I can't tell if that's just actually spicule sticking out. Oh, on the side there at the top. Yeah, like top left. Like I can't tell if that's its attachment structure or if those are just spiky spicules. Yeah. Let's see here. If I get a squared up there. Go ahead and push on a bit there, please. Or it looks like the, the snot thing. That we're yeah, before. right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Ugh, one of my oh, snot right, rock has gone the way <laughs> of this ID. <laughs> <laughs> All right, coming up. Uh, here we go. Wow, There's a little bit more going on. What are you? Bamboo coral. That is very tall. Where does it end? 
I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Well, I'm going to go out on deck. Okay. Okay. You want lasers back on? That is yeah, impressive. Yeah, sure. Thank you. And I'm just going to run ahead a little bit of yep. Atalanta. So good thing there's not much on these rocks. Yep. <laughs> Do you want me to pull wider on Atalanta? No. Okay. Thank you. Keep so moving. Keep moving, yeah. Yep. Bridge, this is Nav. Zero four zero, fifty meters. Copy. Raj. Thank you. Wow, I didn't expect this here. Just doesn't look like the map. <laughs> Not entirely, anyway. More of that tall bamboo, not quite as tall. Yeah, that one was ridiculous. It, it achieved great heights. I had a question about the weather at the surface here. Um, I'm not sure what the temperature is outside. Uh, Around 17, maybe, Celsius. 17 Celsius. That sounds about right. That's what it was earlier today. Yeah. And it's been uh, breezy out of the north still, but um, not bad. We're getting a couple of swells up here at the surface, but um, you know that uh, hasn't really affected our ability to dive today. Looks like we're at around 18 degrees Celsius outside. Leela, can you talk a little bit about what kind of data you record yeah. as we progress? Sure. So I am recording all kinds of stuff, pretty much everything you hear that people are talking about. So I'll record where in our dive we are generally, you know, what waypoints we're near and what the flow of the dive is. Um, so operations type stuff like that. And I'll record any engineering issues that are encountered. Um, so I'll be forced listening to the pilots a lot. Sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> Sorry for you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and um, trying to keep track of that in case they ever want to go back to those notes or we're wondering, you know, why we were paused for a while. And I record all of Val's interesting rock commentary. <laughs> and, um, and I'll just be typing away IDing bio that we pass by. Um, and I'm taking pictures the whole time. So if we want to have any of these images, um, there's video being recorded the whole time, but if we want to have the images, uh, I need to take those frame grabs. And I'm also controlling a still camera, which is um, a DSLR, Sony DSLR, that's inside of a housing um, on the light bar of Hercules. And no. controlling that on a separate computer. Mm -hmm. And also recording all the samples and, and metadata about them. So you're not so busy, you're saying? Yeah, so basically <laughs> I'm just twiddling my thumbs. <laughs> That's a lot of data. Yeah, oh no, that was uh, an enemy or something.
Yeah, a lot of this is in place or seems to have uh, still been attached thanks to uh, getting crusted over. We've been seeing a lot of this the last few dives. It's got more kite in over here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it sure. looks like it. Yeah, so this kind of uh, manganese growth is very much uh, supporting the idea that these are old seamounts, like we were thinking. The Cretaceous definitely was an interesting time in Earth history. There's a lot going on. Big pulse of plumes <laughs> that all kind of arrived at the same time around 120 million years ago that eventually exhausted the uh, initial plume head portion. Um, then a few million years of impacting under the lithosphere and then uh, uh, this, this was sort of a global event. So you can see these flood basalt provinces worldwide and then uh, a number of them started tapping into the uh, thinner plume tail that follows that head. And that is um, what we would call hot spots sort of colloquially, and uh, as tectonic plates move over them, they uh, generate these uh, age-progressive strings of volcanoes, uh, and that's what we think the Liliokalani Ridge is, so that's why that's part of the reason why we're uh, exploring this area and uh, picking up rocks. Trying to figure out if uh, they come from, you know, if their geochemical signatures are consistent with what uh, we interpret as uh, plume material. Val, do we know much about what the effect of all that volcanism was on the climate uh, in the Cretaceous? Uh, we know a little bit. Um, oceanographically, it was pretty stressful. Um, when you have that much, uh, you know, that much uh, uh, volcanic activity on the seafloor, you can actually have something called an anoxic event that occurs. Um, it changes the the chemistry and uh, the chemistry of the seawater to uh, the point where there's really not a lot of uh, dissolved oxygen in it and that can cause a, a mass extinction. And with that, you also see um, in depositional areas from around that time, uh, you see a lot of uh, black shales in, in, uh, uh, that are kind of coeval with uh, high rates of plume activity. Um, climatologically, I'm not as familiar with um, with what happened at that point, but uh, it, it was a general, like, a uh, stressful event on the biome. Mm -hmm. Particularly hard hit was uh, were the oceans. So I'm gonna go look that up. It's too many. <laughs> I strongly relate. I'm like an inbox zero kind of person, but a tab one million. I'm not an inbox. <laughs> zero person either <laughs> i'm the exact opposite I'm really a, uh inbox i have to pay google for more inbox oh, space because i won't delete it. anything but me uh too. Yeah, me too. but but i can't open more than three tabs without breaking a sweat wow <laughs> ah okay my advisor <laughs> likes to to come over and show me on his phone his like 10,300 unread emails and i just <laughs> like oh <my> <laughs> so basically i'm a hoarder is what i'm saying <laughs> So uh, we are almost uh, at waypoint five. Would we like to stay over for some time or proceed to waypoint six? Uh, do you want to look at this at all? Okay, we can. W let's keep moving. <laughs> keep moving. Yeah, brutal honesty. Let's keep doing it. <laughs> What's that orange? Is that coral? Do a partial zoom here, please. Where? These orange guys here. Oh, I was Rhinoids. Down lower, but. Bottom right, those, right. Those Is are it? also orange. Looks pretty. Oh, that's right. Looks like a neighborhood hangout. Yeah, sure. Is. Yeah. Some really dark hemicralium. Yeah. All right, and then to the bottom left. Is that correct? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So the Cretaceous, Just yeah, along with lower. along with those uh, black yeah. shales and anoxic yeah. events, yeah. Um, okay. Cretaceous was considered an archetypal yeah. example of a greenhouse climate. So. Um, pretty high atmospheric CO2 uh, concentrations, um, 
apparently compared to today, it was five to 10 degrees uh, Celsius warmer on average. So that's a global well, average. So zero Quite eight a bit. Zero. That's incredible. Sorry? Zero eight zero. Zero eight zero, Raj. And rather high sea levels. Raj, this is not. Zero eight zero fifty meters. Correct. Would there be any ice at all at that uh, global temperature? Um, it probably wouldn't be a whole lot at the uh, at the poles. No. Mm -hmm. What are those? Thank you, Bridge. What you looking at? The little yeah, a little pom pom coral thing. Pom pom coral. Yeah, right, let's take a look. Is that the goatee on that rock? Yeah. Goatee. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I cannot unsee coral. it. <laughs> okay. Let's see here. Uh, more of a soul patch, I would say. Yeah, no, you're <laughs> yeah. right. You're I right. I'm fish out for sure. <laughs> oh, look at you. Oh. Wow. Wow, Sorry. you're beautiful. Wait, actually, that almost looks like, I mean, it's probably not, but it almost looks like calcareous algae. What's that? What's right in front of it? Another anemone? Another anemone, yeah. yeah. You want to come forward, actually? Exactly. There's one right below it. Yeah. Might be able to get a better shot of it. Exactly. I was thinking it's a primnoid, probably. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I think these two are the same, hey? Yeah, probably. Let me see if I... Eh, I can't sit down. All right. Well, we can go ahead and push on in there again, please. Oh, that's different. Yeah, it is different. Ah, rats. Interesting. You want to see the one on the other overhang again? Or it's all good. Rad, rad. I got some picks. Okay, pull away, please. Yeah, Sako suggests Calyptrophora. Yeah, the second one looked like that. The first one looked really weird, though. It almost didn't look like polyps. It almost looked like... Like square, yeah, primnoid? like the like sea oat calcareous algae is all I could see. Halamida. Well, that's a nice uh, pillow cross section just moving off into the uh, lower right corner. Second one, radi radial okay. fracture surfaces. Uh, second one might be Norella. Yeah. Okay. Calyptrophora norella. Big rocks. Big rocks. Very big. Not sample. Are you sure? Do not pass go. Do not collect. 200 rocks. <laughs> <laughs> These look a little more polished. Yeah. We're starting to get into cup, car uh, cup coral. Not cup carol. It's not the holidays. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cup coral territory. Well, actually, today is a holiday. Yeah. It is, apparently. I'm really bad at keeping track of those. <laughs> Here's a question. So if you could add one tool or ability um, mm. to Hercules, oh. what would your first choice be? Hmm. Mm. Kylie, you got a, you got a, got one for this? No. Do they have to be <laughs> real? Like, could it be like no. a superhero power? Su superhero power would be fine. Or real, mm. uh, like to automatically know the direction of the coolest stuff, <laughs> like a dowsing rod. Yeah, exactly. That would be cool. It's like okay, warmer, warmer, warmer. There's another Cold. Those bright yellow sponges. Oh, sorry. Where right. right. was it? Uh, just in the lower right. I'm just pointing out stuff. Reg. Yeah. So, Lily, you want a you want like a cool beacon? Yeah, a cool beacon, but you know, like a warm, warm beacon for cool Look stuff. Look at that! Look at those pillows. The rocks? It's a big thick. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> the Somewhere between pillow and low bait at this stage. <laughs> Sorry. I think I'd call these low bait lava flows. <laughs> I am starting to spell stuff wonky. <laughs> the one I think would be cool is uh, in 2018, uh, Alan Adams from oh, the yeah. uh, MIT Ocean Lab. Mm -hmm. He was experimenting with a 
360 camera that yeah. would be mounted oh, on one of yeah. the manipulator arms, and then... Oh, fishy. Ooh, Go ahead and oh, push yeah. on in there a bit, please. Is that one of those Mora Day from yesterday? It looks so much lighter. Let's get there. Oh, different. no, that's something different. Those had the, the vertical yeah, line, thin yeah. thing. Yeah. So yeah, that was cool. And then we could put on VR glasses and yeah. walk around in the image of the seafloor. Right. It was so you could, you really could, cool. You could pilot That's wild. with uh, 360. Oh, he's booking it. I was talking to Mark about that earlier today, and he was claiming not to remember it, but I have a picture of Mark wearing them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Any thoughts? <laughs> Synaptobranchus, maybe? I didn't get a good look at his oh. caudal. Sorry. Yeah, it had a bigger head. There, it's better. How does the, the it looked um, better? The, the, it looked, it's yeah, what's hot. the bottom? Yeah. It didn't How have, hot? like, a, a yeah. square caudal. Is it very then hot? It was it it? tapered. Yeah, oh, was so it's okay. heat. Up. Oh, that's better. I mean, it's not as good, but it's definitely better. Yeah. Better, but, see. It, uh, it's just like kind of jumpy, I think, I guess. <laughs> We've been adjusting the pan and tilt and the up and down speeds on the camera for like five times now, <laughs> just to give some context to this. So we're constantly tuning things. We should leave it like this though for the next dive because I do think it is past 3000. I wonder if it'll look like look better in water. That's a good point, yeah. Because the pressure at deeper depths dampens the speed of our pan and tilt. So it looks different on deck. We tune it on deck, and we can only guess what it'll really look like in water. <laughs> There's another nice Big tall whip, whip coral. Bam bamboo. Yeah. Just kind of imagining what this looks like when it was uh, actively erupting. Yeah, must have been so cool. Yeah. So yeah, even though we're starting to um, get on top of the uh, uh, sort of the geo structure, we've you know we've. Uh, started getting into gentler slopes whereas we were in a um, <clears throat> much steeper slope at the start of the dive i'm still seeing what looks like subaerial or submarine excuse me submarine uh looking features so yeah i don't know yeah. where keep moving or how much of that this was above water Bridge, this is nav another move zero eight zero fifty meters it's a very bright sea star yeah yeah I wonder if we might see some subaerial features higher up. I, I honestly don't know. One of our viewers would add fighting ability so that we could have battle bots with our ROVs. <laughs> <laughs> we will not pit them against each other. They're friends. They are friends. That must be one of my they help each other. middle school robotics students <laughs> <laughs> tuning in. What time is it for them right now? Um, eight o'clock. Oh, all right. Something like that, 830. They're probably up. Do you mind if we do a more reset here? I think I'm right there. Yep. Looking good? Yep. One, two, three. I wonder why it drifts at yeah. strange frequencies. Some days it's more and some days it's less. Is it... Is it like after sometimes if we didn't freeze it it go back or it will remain i think it'll actually deviate more if uh, we don't reset it right now and then because it's it's using dead reckoning yeah so it's like cumulative errors yeah i think so 
axis. What is dead reckoning? It's a way of navigation. Yeah. So um, you kind of keep keep a sense of your direction and uh, uh, try to navigate from point to point um, based on where you want to end up. Yeah. So it only knows like you went in this direction about this distance, and yeah. as yeah. you turn and it is slightly off. It accumulates. Yeah. Very old navigational technique. For for us on the on the vehicle side, it's like we have um, two different ways of knowing where we're at. So we have like the USBL, and that gives us more of like a global position. You know what I mean? And then this like the DVL, uh, the dead rack that we use for the seafloor. Um, that's more of like a local position. So combined, we know where we're at in both a local and global scale, but as a local um, position kind of wavers, mm -hmm. then you have to get it reset based on your USBL accumulation, like where that starts to ping. Between the beacon on the vehicle, which has a USBL, and the beacon on the ship, which has a USBL. Mm -hmm. Ultra short baseline. Gotcha. Okay, Looks like we got another rock field for you here. Yes, we do. A lot of larger pieces in this debris field. So probably just falling off of some of the stuff just barely uphill here. Kylie, do you have any questions? Your questions were really entertaining yesterday. Watch went really quickly. My brain broke yesterday. <laughs> uh oh. No, like in a good way. Okay, good. Yes, it was like, I'm s I'm still in the marination process. Marination. Marination. Gotcha. <laughs> Roger. Sometimes you do have to marinate in it. I do, mm -hmm. yeah. Because honestly, uh, there were, <laughs> yeah, there were some foundational things I didn't know, and <laughs> so I'm about building a new foundation, and you know that wasn't built in a day, so. Nope. I need time. <laughs> <laughs> overwhelmed actually <laughs> yeah, we did like in the best way in the in, like it was like amazing but also i was like oh my god <laughs> i need to recoup <laughs> that's a-okay so val how did all this rubble form if we had so many like big pillows also um, these are scattered remnants of uh pillows that have just fallen apart so they they uh the way that they cool um pretty rapidly they develop um structural weaknesses basically jointing as we call it um that follows the gr the heat gradient in the pillow because it's coldest at the outside and um then you have this kind of warmer gooey center that it takes longer to cool down and uh as things uh as the lava freezes and contracts, it, it develops those, uh, basically a radial jointing pattern and uh, makes it easier to break apart along those lines. So that's why you'll see a lot of like rounded stuff, um, fragments of pillows that uh, look kind of wedge-shaped or semicircular, and they have uh, basically kind of angular breaks that point in toward the center of a circle. So that seems to be a lot of what we're seeing here. And yeah, they can be they can be kind of fragile over time. 
But yeah, that seems to be mainly what's comprising these rubble fields right now, kind of in between different lava flows. So if these have a coating that contains iron, are they magnetic? Um, I don't think the crusts themselves are magnetic. I've never seen that. But um, sometimes with uh, mafic rocks, like you can get magnetic dikes that intrude into uh, uh, some of these set, uh, uh, outcrops. I don't think we're going to see that here, but I've seen it on, on land. You know, sometimes you get uh, basaltic or even ultramafic dikes that um, took long enough to cool because they, they don't get quenched like lava does. They're, they're intrusive, so they've got a little more time to cool down in a number of cases. And if their iron content is high enough and if they are capable of precipitating uh, magnetic minerals, which um, isn't always the case, Keep sometimes you can end up with... Uh, Bridge, uh, this is nav. Yeah, we'll let them do that. Sam, zero, 080, zero, 50 meters. Yes, please. Yeah, so um, as they cool, any mag magnetic or uh, uh, minerals will get time to align with Earth's magnetic field, and that can actually mean that uh, oh. uh, they they have, you know, they, they're magnetic themselves. And th what happens when you put a uh, compass up next to them uh, is that you'll, you'll see uh, the compass adjust to that uh, little magnetic field. And hmm. they're actually really hard to get orientations on because in uh, the field, geologists use compasses to get an idea of the orientation of you know, certain uh, geologic features, Go like push on in there, sedimentary please. beds and stuff. So few polyps left on that one. I know. Yeah. It really, really did a job there. It did. It was hungry. <laughs> now he's, like, sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> Exhausted. Food coma. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, sometimes rocks are magnetic. Um, here, I I, please. probably, probably not so much. What do you mean there? Uh, yeah, you can see that in. Uh, Thank you ocean crust floor too as we were talking about a little bit last night um it's not necessarily magnetic crust but you do see um alignment of magnetic minerals in the oceanic crust and that helps develop the uh <coughs> the stripes um that uh Lila was talking about last night with uh that you see kind of forming and spreading ridges as uh the poles flip and uh reverse themselves periodically and we have sensitive enough instrumentation to be able to detect that and map out the magnetic stripes across the seafloor. Very useful tool until actually you get into the Cretaceous, where we run into a uh, period of something like 35 million years or so, where there were no magnetic reversals at all. And that's mm. called the uh, Cretaceous Normal Supercron. So Supercron. Supercron. Wow. Wow. And there's another one in the Jurassic that coincides <laughs> roughly with another similar uh, uh, pulse of, like, which we actually call a super plume event, <laughs> um, where you had a bunch of uh, mantle plumes that all kind of got started around the same time in the Jurassic. Yeah, the magnetic field also quieted down then, too. Huh. So um, there's, there's a lot of speculation that there is a link between um, uh, reversal frequency of Earth's magnetic uh, field. And when you get large clusters of plumes that all kind of get started and start moving to the mantle and creating these, uh, uh, moving up against the, moving, convecting upward in the mantle and impacting under the crust, developing these huge, large uh, uh, volcanic piles, anoxic events, there seems to be a very global event. It involves basically the entire planet. They're yeah. quite rare though. So I think the current estimate is somewhere on the order of this happens once about every 300 million years. So it's not anything we have to worry about. <laughs> not as a species. It's absolutely wild how much 
humans have managed to learn about the very, very long history of this Earth just yes. based off of how it looks right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is amazing. Val, there's a request for you to explain a little more about how um, compasses are used with rocks. Oh, like uh, in the field? Yeah. Um, so that helps us uh, orient <coughs> like sedimentary layers. So the ba one of the basic principles of geology is that if you deposit rock, um, it's it's going to form basically a horizontal surface. Um, there, there, as always, there are a couple of minor exceptions to that, and ha ha has to do with like on lapping onto other features, where you may not get a perfectly flat deposition. But for the most part, you expect sedimentary layers to form uh, as horizontal beds of material. Um, and as those stack up on top of each other, um, you know, the, they'll eventually lithify, turn into rock formations. And then in some cases, you end up uh, having tectonic processes that will go and deform or tilt those layers in some way. And in order to map out um, some of those tectonically altered features, you have to uh, get an orientation of those beds um, that were once originally horizontal uh, and now bent or folded tilted, cut off, whatever. So using a compass will help you get something called a strike and a dip on those uh, bedding planes. So the strike is um, something you you can make both of those measurements with a compass. Strike tells you the orientation of where a flat plane intersects with a tilted bed. And then the dip tells you the angle that, um, basically the angle that that uh, tilted bed is pointing down. And those two, like the strike and the dip, are always orthogonal to each other, so they're 90 degrees apart. And that, that gives us uh, orientation information that we can plot on a uh, geogra uh, topographic map. And from there, we can start to interpret um, some of the structures, like the shape of the structures that we can see in outcrop in various places. And from there, uh, we can start to construct cross-sections and start interpreting um, the tectonic history of the area. So it's a very simple kind of uh, tool, that um, a very simple classical mapping tool that we use to, to figure out um, you know, the, the local geologic history of a region that we're interested in studying. If I remember right, that was one of the big pieces of evidence for seafloor spreading that... The magnetic reversals? Yeah. Okay, that's, that's a different topic than what uh, I just oh said. Oh, it's a different, yeah. okay. Yeah, strike He's and dip is structural information. Okay. Is this Steno's laws, the original horizontality superposition? Yep, superposition, yeah. Could you push on yeah. a minute, please? Good Is that a little urchin there? Oh, no, yeah. yeah. Oh, Similar right. to the one we collected the other day. Yeah. So, yeah, it, um, with regard to alignment of magnetic uh, minerals within a, uh, a lava as it cools, cool. um, Pull away, please. Yeah, that's that's the thing that um, makes those stripes that we can see in magnetic data on the seafloor. You don't use a compass for that one, though. Um, probably not magnetic enough to affect okay. a compass reading, even up close. Um, it's it's something we can detect with uh, 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 different instrumentation. Like uh, you can do like aeromagnetic surveys, for example, to do to look at magnetic uh, uh, patterns. Um, on terrestrial, uh, terrestrial uh, uh, land masses. I'm not exactly sure how they do that. Um, the oceanic, that's a little bit of a different process, I believe. Was this magnetism? Yeah, the, the magnetic stripes on the seafloor. I'm not sure if we can see I've those from an aeromag survey, can we? Oh, I don't know about that. I've been out on a ship, uh, when I w went out on a cruise on the Armstrong, we had a magnetometer on the ship, and we're yeah tracking yeah that's right that that's way. the Ravel has one too. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So yeah, we can we can make measurements with ships. I'd completely forgotten about that. Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> Does Nautilus have a magnetometer? No. Okay. This is not. And I've say move zero eight zero fifty meters. I remember it being really not fidgety, but it was the kind of thing where it was like we set this up right here in this room and don't touch it at all because if you ever turn it off like it will never be the same and it will be broken it was one of those things that i was like 
doing a marine technician internship and that was one thing I just never touched. I was like, okay, cool, I'm staying away from that. <laughs> were you a mate intern? What was that? I said, were you a mate intern? Yeah, we, we, I think we've had this chat. We were mate intern. You were, you did the Elvin mate internship, right? Yeah. Yeah. Where'd you do yours? Um, I was just out on the, the RV Neil Armstrong. Did you have a good time? I don't I think we talked about this. I think we did. No. Yeah, we did. <laughs> I don't remember it. It didn't happen. <laughs> it didn't happen. <laughs> I did have a good time. Um, I w yeah, it was a just. It was one of the shorter ones, so it was just a 36-day cruise off the Reykjanes Ridge off of Iceland. Um, oh my God, that sounds amazing! It was really cool. We went right around the summer solstice, so it was like 24 hours of daylight. It, the sun just like bounced on the horizon. It was crazy. Wow. Yeah. That so no be. matter what watch you had, it was daytime. <laughs> That's pretty cool. No sunsets though. Actually, okay, so like at, there were some parts by the end where it was like midnight, 1 a.m., it would do the like sunset and then immediate sunrise. <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty spectacular. Uh, yeah, so That's an interesting sensation, yeah. Yeah. Do you have to like, no, never mind. I was going to say something stupid. <laughs> like, you know, if it, you're like standing on like the back deck and like yeah. the sun goes down, do you have to like walk to the bow to see it come up? <laughs> 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 we know the answer to this question. I know, I know, but it's weird because I can't wrap my mind around like yeah. what's at the base of around the sponge. It. <laughs> yeah, and then it just jumps around the earth and it comes around the other side. It's a primrose color. It's got a <laughs> weird color on that sponge, though. Go ahead and push on in there, partial. A lot of ophiroids yeah, on it. We've seen a couple of those on the stage. It looks like a face. Quite yellow. It looks like the moon with a face oh, in it. Oh, it's the. Uh, Look oh my gosh, gosh, it is. Yep. It is. Hey, Kylie, you want to turn the lasers well, off again? Yeah, lasers it off. It does look like the moon. <gasps> it's made out of cheese. It Oops, does sponges. that too. That. <laughs> wow. Oh my God, stop with the cheese references. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> that I really thought that looked like the moon face. It, it did. That's cool. Yeah, that's awesome. When the moon hits your eye, like a big yellow sponge. <laughs> <laughs> like a big yellow like a sponge. Big wheelage cheese. <laughs> Look at all of That's the little body. brittle stars in it. <laughs> you know, like where does one start and the next one begin? I wow. don't know. Do you want to do a, a zoom in there? Yeah. Nothing better to do. Wow, yeah, they're deep it really just looks right. like stretched Oop. cheese. It kind of does. Oh, like, ugh. <laughs> Even the bubble cam like looks awesome too. Swiss and pastrami. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like you know when they have the hollowed out Parmesan rind and they like yeah. make the pasta in there. That's like the feelings I'm getting from this. <laughs> I would highlight this just for this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> I want right, a oh picture wait, of that um, moon side face thing. Yeah, that one's cool. Come to me tomorrow. I would make that my desktop background. <laughs> Let's see what still Kim has to say about it. Maybe it was like an inverted pizza, you know? It's like cheese. Actually, no, never mind. That's <laughs> that <was laughs> definitely not. Ago. No dough, all cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Crustless pizza. <laughs> make a cheese pizza with uh, bread toppings. OK, all right, you guys, this is <laughs> not a cool conversation. I'm starving. <laughs> Do you need to go get a snack? I'm like not hungry. That food just sounds really good, and I miss miss that. Yeah. I haven't seen pizza for a couple days. I miss days. bread a lot, like good bread. You miss? Oh, I was gonna say. <laughs> so oh, I still have dreams about bread. <laughs> that was like the Mac the McCoy one. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> Thank uh, you, uh, Justin, for keeping us off topic. <laughs> I'm just trying not. To, I've been seasick, so I've been eating rice and. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, bread. So all that sounds so good. Oh, I'm trying, oh. To be, trying to be disciplined. Sorry. Do I see a batroidal sample? Ooh. Do you see a batroidal sample? <laughs> I thought I did. Over to the right. Would you like to stop? Yeah. Do you uh, want us to stop? The yeah. Show? How about we take a look? Bridge. At that? This is Nav. Hold position, please. Thanks. Thank you. Where are those lasers at? Yeah, so uh, I'm kind of looking at that bad boy there. Oh, they were off. Sorry, I didn't mean to be rude about that. I was trying to look for them. Yeah. Um, that. It's kind of, it might be kind of big. That looks pretty big. Maybe what you that one. Maybe might that's be a little better. more reasonable. Uh, do you guys 
you mind if I go up a little slope? I'm a little bit behind. Okay. For the swing. There are no pennies in these zoom banks, in these sample banks. Negative. No pennies. Well, let's earn a few pennies then. I'm full down on the down down. Rudge. Yeah. I'm seeing I'm a few what I it. <laughs> 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 on the down down. Raj. I'm full down on the down down. Raj. <laughs> Are you somewhere here or? Yeah, I'm like I'm somewhere down there. So, Robert target. Looks better. Are you ready? Oh, sure. Go ahead. Thank you. <laughs> so on the topic of wanting pizza just because we've been talking about it. Yes. <laughs> really Say hungry. more. <laughs> um, I was talking to Kitashi um, the other day um, about how watching him eat his dinner late made me want dinner, <laughs> even though I'd already eaten it. Um, and, and he said uh, that there's a word in Chinese like for that exact emotion. Really? Wow. Apparently, it's uh. called um, chan, and it uh, it just literally means like you don't need or even actually want something, but because you see it or because a kind of a connotation of like because you don't have anything better to do, um, mm. you want it. Um, so he was like, yeah, you have Chan right now. It <laughs> sounds like a very human thing. Yeah, I just had never had a word for that emotion before, and now I will use that forever. <laughs> I'm, gl I'm glad there there are languages that capture that kind of yeah. thing properly. Yeah. Yeah. I, know, I know one word in Mandarin now, and it's extremely important to me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're in a happier spot here. Is there anywhere... That looks botryoidal. Open out, and maybe that if it's not stuck to uh, whatever it's sitting on. Okay. I think it's going to be stuck. Okay, Raj. Probably is stuck. <laughs> we Knowing my luck lately, it probably is. We can poke it. We like it. Yeah, we can poke. Yeah. Hey, Kylie, I, do I'm you down mind? for a round of poking uh -huh. rocks. Sure. Have we poked enough rocks today? The answer is no. Never. <laughs> My mom's like, can you FaceTime right now for Easter? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's 2.40 a.m. in Hawaii, so I don't know why you would assume I was awake. But also, I am awake, and also, no. <laughs> Tell them to tune in to NautilusLive.org. I really want to, but we're not seeing that much right now. <laughs> I mean, if we put one of the studio cameras up on one of the channels, then she could see the back of you. Oh, I could do that. <laughs> to the side, the side view. <laughs> yeah, I could do that. I might be able to get a front view, but it'd be a little tricky. <laughs> a little tricky, tricky. <laughs> Here's a question that came in. Have any of you worked on something that debunked an old theory due to new technology or techniques that you used? Debunked an old theory. I, I helped prove the rubber two mantle plume is really long lived. Interesting. Not everybody agrees with that. Okay, okay. I don't know, that's just that's just regular scientific arguments though. <clears throat> Yeah, so this one, that one might also be a candidate. Oh, yeah, yeah. That one sure. could be as well. So it looks like we may have some choices here. All right. Cool. You want to look over that way a little bit? Da -da -da -da. Nice. We're all jumpy. And go ahead and push on in there a bit, please. You want to look up a little bit there? Yeah, oh, nice. Solid.
Ugh. Not bad. My finger is in there. That one uh, holding fast. Oh, there we the go. one it's next to it is loose. Yeah, okay, let's do that one. <coughs> Ooh, that one looks a little bit oxidated or dated. Crumbly might be good. Does uh, Beth want them to be a bit bigger or is that size fine? Um, I think that should be okay. Probably 20. Yeah, because I've been. Away. I inadvertently gave her a couple of much bigger ones. All right, go ahead and push on in there a bit, please. Yeah, solid. What are we thinking for this guy? We like it. Um, looking at it, I'm not. It's not as patriotal as I was thinking. Um, we can throw it and get a new one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm wondering. That cool. might be a better you option. Come a little wide there, please. Thank you. Sorry about that. No. Put it back where it belongs. <laughs> we came <laughs> all yeah. this way for these rock samples. Don't take one you don't like. Yeah. Oh. Jenga. Someone commented that we're on a botryoidal in, uh, Easter egg hunt. Hmm. We are. Yeah. We are. Starting early. Huh. Interesting. Oh, I can get on. my grip a little better on this guy. Okay. Oh. Best I jump off little sea star. All right, go ahead and push it in there again, please. And go. Let's find it. Yeah, I think that one looks a little bit better. Okay, the other view my kill switch. Maybe still some case. angularity to it. Why are these samples being so hard to pick out? This doesn't look like it has that grapey texture that you like, right? Right. No. Yeah, I'm not seeing. I'm not seeing it. Okay, I'll put it back. All right. Yeah, we'll we'll look around a little bit here, and if we don't see anything, then we can move on. <coughs> Roger. Can I come a little wide there, please? Hello, Mr. Shrimp. Shrimp. Scram. Uh, uh, maybe not so much. Anything over to the Dang. right. Yeah, you want to go ahead and push on in there a bit, please? There yeah, it's looking there. pretty angular. Anything? Well, there's a tiny bit of botryoidal texture here, but that's a really big piece. That is a big piece, yeah. yeah. Do you just get right here? Oh, man. Yeah, it's big. I'm going to pan over. It's way too big, yeah. I'm going to pan up. That's pan. asking for trouble. Pan <laughs> down. Have we already picked up the one right below it? That one like kind of has botryoidal bits. Which one are you looking at? Right where the minip is now, the one it just okay. tapped. Actually, this one might. What's that behind it? Is that a shrimp? Oops. No, that's not a sh Maybe it is. This is not a bio moment, Kylie. Yeah, but look <laughs> at it. <laughs> <laughs> sort of see-through, but also not. All right. Do we like this guy? Go ahead and push on in there a bit, please. I can dust it off a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like it's hanging on. There you go. That's not coming off there. <laughs> That's what we need, a can of compressed air on the ROV. <laughs> oh, no, I'm totally that kidding. That won't do very well. No, it wouldn't uh -huh. do very well at all. We like, uh, we know like. That looks, that looks pretty good, I think. I'm seeing some polishing on that corner. Yeah, I think we can give that one a shot. Okay, sure thing. Is this going to the forward bio? Yeah, it'll be in full wide, please. Omega. Or Omega, Raj, you want a full rack back there? Yeah, Raj. Oh my goodness, this corner is very cold. I'm like shivering. I'm I like know, I have put on cold. <laughs> like four <laughs> layers since getting into the van. Mm. I'm wishing I had a sleeping bag for my legs. Ooh, <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, ready for tool tray out? Raj. Raj, go ahead. Is there anything floaty in the front? Nope. Raj. Just another rock in Lambda. Lambda, Raj. That's oh, a wow. big rock, you guys. 
Do you want to be on the kill switch again there, Kylie? Yeah. Thank you. It's doing lots of its jumpy business. So we're going for Omega, I'm assuming? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's correct. Omega. Omega. And then, let's do this a little bit differently. Niskin. Yeah, sure thing. Eh, not happy with that. All right. All set. Very nice. Okay, coming in. Roger. And uh, how many Niskins have we pulled? Just the one? Just the one. We haven't, okay. haven't had anything super inspiring. Yeah, this is, uh, they've all had some interesting challenges for uh, uh, the rock sampling efforts the last couple of dives. Suleiman, that was 074. Yep, already done. Perfect. All right, and we're going for two, yeah? Yes. Two yellow, yes. Yes, two. Would you mind opening the iris a bit there, please? I will add Thank zero you. seven five on it. Yep. Smooth. Okay. Awesome. Excellent. Beautiful. We have a question about what happens to the biological samples we collect. Um, they don't have their best day. Comes up and we all pounce on it <laughs> once we get the okay and we get all the samples off and then the biological samples it was about the bio right yes. yeah and then the biological samples get put in the fridge right away um and we take them out one at a time as we process them and they each get preserved in the way that we think will be most useful to the scientists that want to study them in the future um, so shall we keep moving or? Yeah, let's get moving. I okay. turned you. I turned the heading so that you could see something, but you're yeah. also have a wrap. I'll readjust. Hey, <laughs> Raj. Okay. Sorry. Raj, Raj. <laughs> oh yeah. You are in the good heading zero eight zero. Zero eight zero, Raj. Raj, this is enough. Zero eight zero, fifty meters, please. And then I'm going to pop out your pan and tilt. Roger, thank you. And, yeah. and I'm going to mess it up a little bit while you fly here. So I can get a square. Um, so the samples get preserved, uh, whichever way we think is best for the scientists that may want to use them and for what the end goal is with them. And, uh, and then however they are preserved, they get sent to the Museum of Comparative Zoology at, um, at Harvard and it goes into their invertebrate, uh, zoology and malacology collection, which we, malacology, talked about yesterday is a study of 